Uh, good. Good. So today I'm I'm joined by Zaratustra Serpent and um, Elder Fort and yes. So can you give us a short synopsis? So like w- w- about your, tell us something about your book, Zaratustra. Well, the book is about uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and uh, it basically represents my research. Uh, um, uh, my, my my philosophy basically uh, uh, about pop culture, um, and uh, it's it's very uh, it, it contains a lot of a lot of things yes and, and so I, I uh, uh, because I I explore pop culture and, and pop culture for for the past two hundred years, um, which which all kind of play into the book. But uh, most mostly, it's just analyzing all of the uh, MCU movies that came before I, I wrote it. I wrote it during the pandemic, uh, in 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 twenty twenty basically during the pandemic, uh, and and uh, so there were twenty three movies, uh, and and I just uh, through the, an, an, analyzing them, uh, just. Because I see it as as a work of art that represents our time, that best represents our time, the most important work of art of the 2010s, I I use that to talk about where we are culturally, um, and 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 the MCU I I try to show is actually a commentary on on our society today. Um, with, with every hero representing some sort of uh, archetype, which we find in our in our society today, and and, and playing them against each other can uh, lead to interesting uh, insights, I think, in, into our society. So uh, so that was the main thing. The main thing was was to just analyze the, the MCU and 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 to show. Uh, First of all, as a work of art, then as a, as a way to uh, comment on on our on our time, and through that I also uh, expanded to talk about the history of pop culture and and kind of represent my philosophy, uh, which uh, I, ha- I have a philosophy of my own, uh, which has to do which uh, is a Nietzschean philosophy, but uh, is connected to to pop culture. I would say that's. So, very briefly, um, how would you define pop culture? Well, pop is uh, the thing that the 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 art that is not uh, it, 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 that that comes from from below. Yes, so it, it does not have uh, it does not have rules yet. Every every uh, med- every, every medium of art begins as a pop medium it begins by people just doing something and and, and becoming popular uh, for it uh, and and in time i basically see th- three three stages in every medium first of all it goes through the like the pop medium in which it is not respected by the elites uh, but is very popular with the masses uh, and then is actually the time of the greatest geniuses uh who basically create the uh the, the, the basically create the rules of, of, of that medium of, of that medium of art um then comes uh, what i call the serious stage when it begins to to take itself seriously and and be taken seriously uh, as as art but is still connected to to its pop roots and because of that uh it is it can be. Uh, this is the time where the the works of uh, of greatest cultural significance are created because it is still connected to everyday life, to to to, to the culture, to uh, to to whatever uh, what people are doing, and because and because of that, it can comment and influence and, and all that. Um, and eventually, it becomes high art, in which it's basically kind of uh, you know uh, becomes its its own thing. It, it becomes kind of niche. It's a uh, interest. Uh, it has its own, uh, uh, you know, uh, what's the word? Uh, uh, 
forgot the word, but 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 uh, um, it's basically just just the elites are, are interested in it. It's seen as as this thing that is very serious and lofty and and uh, uh, but 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 uh, only, uh, but, but is not connected to anything and and is not uh, uh, um, has no effect on culture. And usually it's because it 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 loses connection with the things that are seen as pop, which is. Uh, everything you know, comedy, uh, action, horror, uh, sex, um, all, all those things that are seen as kind of low, low brow. Uh, the, the people who are the artists who work in that medium, when it becomes high art, they see it as as beneath them to 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 deal with those things. And because of that, they they discon- the whole medium disconnects from from. Uh, uh, from the culture at large, yeah. So if you think, let's say, about, about today about classical music or about painting or about uh, or even jazz music, those that that's high art now. It's it's it does not. Uh, it it interests only the aficionados. That was the word I was looking for. Uh, only the aficionados are interested in it, uh, and it has no effect on our uh, no effect. On, on on our culture, on anything, uh, just be like, yeah. Uh, thoughts? Would you agree with uh, Zarathustra's um, characterization of high culture? I would ask him if uh, this is what he means when he says that uh, pop culture is all that matters. I don't remember if he phrased that. Uh, if you phrase it uh, exactly like this. But I sort of remember this being a, a, a sentence uh, that you said. And if uh, by this you mean that basically the um, public discourse, let us say, centers around the um, centers around the pop culture for most pe- for most people, and um, how that would. Uh, and how that uh, would, uh, in your opinion, uh, shape uh, public discourse? Well, it depends what you mean by matters. Yeah. So, so I mean, I mean, high art still matters to its aficionados. Mm-hmm. Uh, it doesn't matter on on the uh, level of, uh, uh, of of let's say affecting uh, uh, culture. Um, but uh, but it still influences popular art, doesn't it? Uh, sorry, I didn't get that. What is that? It uh, high art still influences uh, from top down popular art because people as uh, it be... it has it has some influence. Yeah, so so mm-hmm. artists who work in the in the pop fields are to take ideas, but uh, really not 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 a lot, not not much. Um, uh, uh, the um, and again, remember that there's also the the serious phase in which it is already seen as art. So uh, it already has uh, uh, people who are, who are respected as as as, as artists. Um, mm-hmm. For instance, cinema. Yes. So cinema is, is kind of moving now into the high art phase, in which uh, mm-hmm. in which though basically you know the, the movies that are considered arty, arty movies. Nobody watches them. The movies that win the Oscars, mm-hmm. yeah, it's it's not. Uh, again, you go back. You go back. Let's say twenty years, uh, uh, twenty five years. Yeah, to to nineteen ninety five, and you see the, the movies that that uh, uh, the, uh, in the category of best movie in the Oscars, it was mm-hmm. it was it was Pulp Fiction, Forrest Gump, The Shawshank Redemption, Four Weddings and a Funeral. Those were films that, that were highly respected as you know as as art, but also very very popular and very influential uh, on our yes, culture. We, we still so so today uh, if you look at the list, uh, uh, there's no and 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 uh, there are still popular movies, but but to be popular today, cinema is it's it's not what uh, it's not. Uh, it's not the art of cinema as it was. I mean, the, the, this is why Scorsese, for instance, kind of denigrated the MCU because it's not it's not cinema uh, for, for him. It's it's not it's not this uh, for him. A movie has to be to represent the you know the vision of the artist. Uh, this is not what you have in 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 the MCU. It's 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 a universe 
which uh, you know the directors work inside and and kind of uh, uh, they have to follow the rules uh, so, so it's uh, it's it's so basically it's the medium is not cinema the medium is universe building um and and that's uh, so, so that that that's the pop that's now. An yeah, that, that's interesting point. I think you have a lot of interesting points, honestly. But uh, don't you think that uh, part of the reason why there is a divide nowadays between the movies that are uh, considered uh, great movies, uh, must watches by the elite, and popular new uh, movies and uh, new mediums? If you want to say that it's uh, Universe building is a medium by itself. I would agree because, for instance, uh, Star Wars was denigrated too at the time of the yeah. original trilogy. Yeah. Don't you think part of the reason why there is a divide today that uh, there wasn't uh, a few years ago is because many movies today are, um, let us say, ideological in a way that, for instance, Pulp Fiction uh, wasn't? Uh, that, that's what happens when uh, a medium becomes high art. It becomes more ideological. It becomes, uh, you know, the elites, and, and, uh, and, and they all think that they have to educate the masses so that they're not looking to make something popular. They look to, to do something uh, deductive. Uh, uh, so... so uh, um, oh, so you think the uh, you think the cause and effect is the other way around? That's a good way to look, no. at, look at it. No, no, that, no, that, that, that's it's it's the reason the reason why cinema became high art is is that uh, uh, it basically pushed out because of, because of the new mediums that came on, along with the internet, um, mm -hmm. and uh, and the rise of television as a serious medium. So te television was a pop medium until the 90s, mm -hmm. and and then it started to basically uh, it turned into a serious medium in which uh, you know you, you a television series is now uh, a story you you tell a, you tell stories with with a television series and, and and much longer stories than you can tell in cinema. It used to be before the 90s every every TV episode was was uh, you know stood on its own. So at most you had like forty-five minutes to tell a story. So it was kind of a mini movie, and 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 you uh, and you couldn't really uh, and and they uh, they didn't really take it as art. It, it was just entertainment uh, for for them, mm -hmm. um, for the creators. Um, but then again, they started to to basically tell uh, long stories with it, and and cinema kind of. Uh, uh, you know, cinema can't really compete. Uh, I mean, I mean, the MCU is basically uh, has basically taken the rules of television and applied them to cinema. Yeah, well, every, every uh, I see what you mean. in the sense that you have to engage with the whole uh, cinematic universe uh, to know what is uh, what is going on. Yeah. 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 Hang, on. yeah. Hang on a minute. I have to open the door for the cat. Just a minute. Yeah. So yeah, it's all right. So yeah, mm -hmm. hmm, I guess. Let's see. Uh, Mom, I'm not going to edit this out because I'm lazy. Okay, I'm back. All right. Oh, uh, where were we? Oh, yeah. On um, on the detail, on the cinematic universes uh, taking the rules of television to make a new medium. Yeah, that is a very good. That is a very good point. I, I had never thought of it in this uh, in this sense, but it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, um, <laughs> and, and and in the book, I kind of go into what, what caused this, the, 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 these changes and all that. Uh, I, I basically divide uh, what I call the pop age into three uh, three periods, and which uh, from 1915 to 1965, more or less is what I call uh, the Hollywood period, which mm -hmm. uh, the, the mediums were uh, cinema, uh, radio, uh, jazz music, and uh, comic books, um, and uh, yeah, and comic books, and, and uh, science fiction in a way. Um, yeah, science fiction also. Um, 
Then, then in, in 1955, from 1955 to 2005, so you have the 10 years uh, uh, transitional period between 1955 and 1965. Uh, so from 55 to 2005 is what I call the rock and roll period, in which the leading mediums were uh, pop music, were rock and roll, uh, everything that came out of rock and roll, uh, television, um, where, uh, and uh, science fiction became, uh, so cinema became a serious medium. So before that, it was created by the studios. Uh, in in this period, it was created by the the so-called auteurs, yeah, the the directors. Oh. Uh, it was the personal vision. Uh, science fiction became a serious. Before that, in in the Hollywood period, you had you had the pop side of of science fiction, which was which was you know short stories. Uh, of uh, just uh, imaginative things, and and you also had a science fiction that was uh, uh, created by the uh, f uh, actually f part of was part of fine literature, uh, in which uh, uh, authors would would use science fiction basically to to uh, predict uh, a dystopian future, <laughs> basically. Um, uh, but but in in in. Uh, in nine uh, from 1955 onwards and and, and uh, uh, it's a long story why uh science the, the the authors of science fiction started to to, to actually write uh to, to become the, the 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 literature became deeper um of science fiction um so so it became serious um comic books switched to basically i i mean this was uh, Comic books switched to to basically superheroes and and youth comics, um, and were seen as something that was, I mean, okay. So in this period, fifty five to two thousand five, first of all, this was uh, the rise of youth culture. So youth became the uh, the teenagers became the driving force of pop culture. Secondly, it was the sexual revolution again. Uh, youth, so so, so you, youth care about sex. So so and and you know uh, so with the sexual sexual revolution with everything with all the changes, um, and and because of that, it was also uh, more physical. Uh, people who were so the <clears throat> the people who were cool in this period were the jocks, the, the people who would do outdoor activities. You know, oh, the, yes, yeah. the, the the athletes, uh, the rock singers, the dancers. And, you know, cheerleaders or whatever, uh, um, you know, stuntmen, yeah, all that, uh, and and the uncool were the nerds, those who would sit at home. So, so all, all the mediums that were nerdy mediums were regarded as uncool, and and and, and, and interesting stuff was happening in in uh, you know in in uh, in comic books, in uh, uh, fantasy literature, uh, and in computer games. But they were all seen as uh, as nerdy mediums, and because of that, they were they, they were not seen. They were they were not really part of of. Uh, I mean, they were not seen as cool. They, they actually did affect culture in in a very big way. But uh, we, we only today we we actually when we look back we can see it. Uh, back then, uh, you know, it, it, there wasn't really talk about them outside of of. The their own uh, circle of of uh, of fans, yeah, outside of the fandom of 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 uh, uh, let's say comic books, uh, the people did were, were afraid to talk about it because they would be seen as uh, yeah as nerds, yeah, uh, which was a derogatory word during that period. Uh, then in ninety five, mm -hmm. um, nineteen ninety five, and that's uh, from ninety five to today, uh, we go into what I call the cyber period. In which the leading uh, mediums are uh, this: the rise of the internet. So, so we got the the internet memes, uh, the YouTube videos, the video games, um, and and uh, basically all the uh, all the nerdy mediums have be uh, because because internet belongs to the, belongs to the nerds. All those nerd mediums and, and and everything that happened in the nerd mediums. Uh, became now part of of the mainstream of pop culture. So actually, universe building started started there. Yeah, it started in 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 Marvel comics. Um, it it uh, you had a little bit of it going on in uh, in science fiction and and in fantasy. Um, 
yeah, in fantasy actually, in quite a lot. Um, so all of that was happening, but but uh, we didn't. The world didn't really pay attention. Uh, and now uh, it it kind of became mainstream. So now you have uh, the universe building is now the uh, one of the leading uh, um, mediums. Yeah. So, so so basically, this is the uh, the story of of the of the pop uh, the pop age until now. Would you say that uh, there is a generational element uh, in this? Because uh, the start of the um, rock period seems to overlap with the prominence of the of the baby boomers, basically in America, at least. This is a pretty, I mean, uh, American kind of uh, yeah. of argument. Well, well, Because uh, ge- generations are different in every yeah. Year. I mean, it, it yeah, it helped, but uh, uh, the, the fact that the baby boomers came along suddenly mm-hmm. the, there was a huge uh, uh, suddenly the youth was a very large part of the population, so the, the market became bigger. I bet, uh... a fact. All right, When so, did so as, as, I was, as I was saying. Uh, the, when the baby boomers, uh, so so they created a larger market for for youth uh, mm-hmm. uh, products, but it actually happened before that. Right after World War II, uh, already the uh, industry, the American industry, defined the teenager as uh, the, the word teenager did not exist before that. He defined the word and started to create products for teenagers. Um, And um, because uh, I mean it wasn't it, it was it wasn't the age of affluent affluence just yet, but already you knew that it the, the, there was already this this rise and 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 uh, and and, and uh, kids would now had and and also because uh, on the bigger thing, the kids were this was still part of what I call the modern age. Yeah, so 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 the modern age begins somewhere at the end of the uh, 18th century and and uh, lasts until until 1965 basically so so it's overlaps mm. uh with the, the the hollywood period is the overlapping is the transitional phase between the modern age and the pop age and in the modern mm. age the idea was that we are creating we are progressing towards perfection the perfection of man um mm. and, and the perfection of society and uh, And what happened in America, America actually represented the alternative to that, because this is where uh, pop culture began, began, yeah, and not pop culture, but the pop age, the pop age began in America, as, because America wasn't, this was a European thing, the modern thing, and, and, and the mediums of, of, the, of the Hollywood period, which, which it's all, it all came from America, yeah, the, the Hollywood cinema and jazz music and, and, and radio, syndicated radio, Um, and, and comic books. Um, th- this all came from America, and it all, it, it wasn't about the future, it was about the now. It, it all celebrated uh, uh, the, the present. Uh, it was about living in the now, in the modern world. Um, uh, but, but then, after America won, uh, basically, uh, yeah, actually, America was the, th- was the country that won World War II, it started to see itself as the leader of, of the free world, as the leader of, of the modern, basically, dream. Uh, and Americans and, and, and America, the American elites started to think in modern ter- in the European terms of, of creating a perfect society, and that, that led to the 50s. So the youth was seen as very important. It was seen as, as the generation of tomorrow, the generation that will be the perfection of man, yeah? We are going to create a perfect society, and the youth represented it. So, so the youth was, was very much catered to, and and so, and, and part of that was that the industry created uh, products for it, and created and created this idea of the teenager and, and all that. And what happened was that the youth in 1955 kind of took that and created a completely new logic, which which uh, uh, broke away from the modern logic, and and basically. Uh, That was the end of the modern age, um, and uh, yeah, but that's a very that's a very long story um, of, of what happened. And uh, you say I, that... I, I, I tell part of it in, in the in my series on psychedelia. If, if you want to watch, the, that's about those years. 
Yeah. I've also seen your video on England. If you want to talk about a bit Italy to a little bit lately. Uh, one uh, thing that comes to mind is that you say that the pop culture was about living in the now, but uh, didn't uh, science fiction already be a war? It wasn't for science fiction already part of uh, pop culture back then, for instance? Yes. It is future. Uh, yes, but uh, so, so first of all, Science, again, you science fiction. Let's say in the Hollywood period, mm -hmm. the, uh, like I said, there were two there were two sides of, of science fiction. There was the the, the the side that was written by fine fine uh, you know fine uh, author fine literature authors, uh, which and fine literature was was the most important one of the two most important mediums of of the uh, of, of the modern age, because mm -hmm. through that you know in in the novel you basically told the story of of uh, of, of 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 human society and 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 uh, of of man basically progressing through history, uh, and uh, but then in that period, novelists started to uh, talk about basically a dystopian future, so, so that the modern age is is leading to uh, to actually not not to the perfection of man, but 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 to to a, to dystopia. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, you think about you know Orwell and and uh, Huxley and and uh, Kafka, um, uh, the and and and, and others, um, and uh, in in the popular field, like I said, it was short stories, which which also broke away from the the main the, the modern narrative. Yeah, the the uh, what's the, you know the uh, what do you call it? the 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 grand narrative of modernism. The, the, and, and and imagine all sorts of and, and imagine all sorts of, of of different futures, yeah. Um, and, and okay, so like I said before, in in uh, in in the rock and roll period, it became serious science fiction, and that's because because the modern dream, because the modern uh, um, you know con uh, the modern logic died. Suddenly, it was it was. Uh, 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 you know, it was seen as as serious to imagine different futures. Yeah, but before that, we, we we thought that we are we are we know we know what the future will be. Now, now it was suddenly the future was unknown, and 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 because of that, science fiction suddenly became uh, a serious form of art. Uh, was seen as a serious form of art. Um, Would you say that? Uh, this idea of making mankind and society perfect uh, is no longer relevant today, or would you see that? Uh, or would you say that there are ideologies today that, uh, in other ways and in other, uh, yeah. there are other always those. There are always those. Yeah, there are always those who remain stuck in the past, mm -hmm. um, and and try to uh, you know re uh, kind of. Uh, they remain stuck in the past. They, 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 you know, uh, and and, uh, uh, the, the, and and you know, uh, you know, you, there are those who are still, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, t t take the uh, um, modern critical theory, for instance, is uh, would be stuck in the past in your. Uh, yes. Oh yes. I it's, would agree because they are basically fighting the same social social battle as in the 1850s, more or less. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. Uh, that, that's uh, one of the things that I, I find. So this is what this is why I I, I uh, say that they are losers. I mean, they, they, they don't understand uh, that uh, our consciousness today has moved on. Now, now there is the uh, you know you can always kind of re. Uh, Interpret and, and 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 bring on from the past, and and, and that's what it's always been done. Yes, yeah? so, so uh, you can. They have made some things that are relevant to our time, but mm -hmm. the logic, um, the logic of of uh, of of, of uh, kind of the dialectic logic uh, that that you know, if you get rid of the uh, system. Is oppressing us. Uh, if you know, if they call it the patriarchy or or whiteness or whatever. That's a modern idea which 
has no place today. It's archaic and stupid, and uh, and and will lead uh, you know, nowhere. And yeah, so that's, I would uh, agree. The so-called progressists are not really very progressists. That is uh, something I've been uh, I've been ranting about quite a few times about how this is uh, on their part a metaphysical assumption of uh, we are the, the vanguard of the future and you are a conservative, you are a disgusting caveman living in oh. Whereas uh, in the mm-hmm. end, you see them uh, fighting the same battles as, the, as in the 800s. That is, yeah, al- yeah. That is well, always funny, yes. Yes, exactly. And... and, and... I've made this point um, uh, many times that uh, why uh, when, when Marxists, I mean, it comes from Marxism, this uh, idea that uh, we are, mm-hmm. you know, um, uh, the idea, that, because Marx came after Hegel, and Hegel was the idea that the progress, progress has been going on until now, and now we we have created the the uh, the, the the perfect basically so, not a perfect society yet, but mm-hmm. but but the the idea the the, the logic that uh, which will lead to a perfect society eventually we we just you know not everyone not everyone is enlightened yet. But once everyone mm-hmm. will be enlightened to the liberal modern logic, uh, the perfect society will prevail and and and, and man will be complete. Um, and 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 then came Marx and said no, there's still one step uh, missing because uh, because uh, the uh, uh, the material uh, side is not complete yet, and uh, mm-hmm. we still need to create the, the right uh, economic system, uh, and 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 basically the economic system uh, and and again, you know, he saw the capitalism as as the thing that you know the, the most progressive thing, uh, Marx. But he said it's not uh, it's not enough because it still divides us into two classes, uh, like every 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 system that came before, um, and and then the next stage is when when the, the working class will will rise up and and always the, the uh, it's always in Marxism in Marx uh, it was always the oppressed class that took the 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 new idea and 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 then and and you know. Uh, out a revolution and imposed the new idea. So, so let's say the bourgeoisie rebelled against the aristocracy and established the liberal capitalist order. And uh, and and the next thing will be that the proletariat, the working class, will rise up and establish the order of uh, of communism, basically. And 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 uh, and that will be the end of history because. Uh, uh, the the, uh, the the way Marx saw it, uh, the uh, capitalism is destroying all cultures and creating just a unified humanity of just of just a, f- a, f- a few, uh, a ver- very few, uh, uh, you know, uh, oligarch, very few bourgeoisie uh, who, who are the, the rich and and the, the huge. Uh, Masses of of uh, of of proletarian, polit- polit- uh, um, and um, and then the proletariat will rise up, and 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 uh, because uh, you know you already have the, the wealth created by capitalism, they will be able to form a communist um, society, and that will be the perfection of man. Now, in in the uh, in the late period of, of, of the modern age, uh, the Marxists realized that this is not happening. Why isn't, it ha- why isn't it happening? They said because the capitalist system has created basically pop culture to, uh, to kind of pacify the masses, uh, to pacify the working class, and, and so they won't realize that they are oppressed. Uh, and because of that, it became necessary. Marx thought that the revolution will just happen on its own. I said, no, the revolution will not happen. You have to wake up the masses. They have to become woke. Um, and um, so, so okay. So, so that was the that, that's that's the basic Marxist uh, on that's the neo-Marxist uh, thing. Yeah, that yeah. you have to wake up the masses. 
from there you go to the Frankfurt School and the yeah, no that, yeah that, that's the Frankfurt School, the, the neo Marxist uh, thing. Um, that uh, the, 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 the culture, uh, instead of looking at, at the economy, they looked at the culture. They said the culture is the thing that, that prevents us from, from reaching the, the utopia. Um, so, what the, uh, the social justice warriors of today are doing. They're, they're doing basically the same thing, but they've taken I guess, the uh, Marxist. For the Marxists, it, it was the end of, of 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 a long process of of one system replacing another. Yeah, uh, and, until until we reach the, this 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 last stage in which uh, you have the capitalist system, which is the last one, the last system that we need to to defeat. Uh, and 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 it's holding on by by uh, by creating culture that that is uh, pacifying the masses. Uh, they the the, uh, the 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 SJWs just took this last stage and basically said that this was happen. This what happened. Uh, this is all of history has been like that. So so they characterized all of history as if you know the patriarchy, for instance, where, where the feminists the way they created the, the patriarchy. Uh, is something that was created like eons ago uh, in in the dawn of humanity, and and kind of shaped us. And this is the, the this is a system that uh, that ruled ever since, um, and and uh, shapes us ever since. And and any change that happens uh, the, since then I just, was just on the surface. The, the main structure still remains. The main structure is still the patriarchy. So and and we need so so basically. And and we need to to bring down the patriarchy. Now, and and the thing that uh, and the first question that I would ask feminists is, if the patriarchy shapes everything that we think, how do you know that your feminism isn't shaped by shaped by the patriarchy? Your ideas aren't shaped by the patriarchy. Well, uh, that is always a funny thing to ask. And and. Now the Marxist would have an answer to that, because the Marxist would say, because I can, because this is only the last stage. I can see the what happened in previous stages. I can see, I can see the 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 law, the the mm -hmm. governed history, which which says that uh, you know uh, every time that the oppressed class is uh, uh, has to, you know, this whole dialectic thing of of uh, so, so so I can I have I can transcend. This this uh, thing that we are trapped in, the, this uh, this culture that we are trapped in, I can transcend and see the truth, uh, the metaphysical truth. The feminists can't, uh, uh, and the SJWs, you know, I, that's why I call them creationists, and I call it creationist feminism because they they, they don't uh, believe in evolution. Yeah, they don't believe that that we've reached this point through through evolution. But through uh, the long time, the man has, has oppressed the woman. It's always yeah, yeah. It, was, it was a single act of creation that created the patriarchy, and, and history has been the same ever since. And because of that, they, they can't rely on, on this. So the, the Marxists, Marx, the, the, the answer the Marxist gives you is a rational one. I, 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 he's still wrong. Yeah, he's still wrong. But yes. but uh, to, to, to I, would, uh, I would argue that it's uh, it starts from uh, wrong metaphysical assumption, and uh, from there yeah. it gets uh, the rest wrong. But yes, it is internally yeah. consistent. Is is this yeah. what you mean? Uh, to, to to prove the Marx is strong, you have to look at reality and, and show them that, mm -hmm. that you know reality does not fit uh, the you know the theory. To, to prove the feminist wrong, I don't even have to look at reality because uh, it, it's it contradicts itself. Uh, it has no basis. And I, it's not rational. The, this idea of the of the patriarchy is not rational. It's not it's not based on anything. It's not it's not based on on any uh, analysis of of history or anything. It's it's just an idea that 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 you know that just was taken from neo Marxism and applied and and that's it and and. Uh, 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 and, and you know, and, and simplified, and and, uh, and applied, and and, and it has no basis. And 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 you know, through intersectionality, kind of was kind of spread to uh, other f groups, and and that's the thing that basically destroyed creationist feminism, because uh, <laughs> by the rules that they created, um, 
the oppressed is the one who has the who has the who holds the truth, which again this is something they inherited from Marxism, which mm-hmm. which can't be justified by their own logic, but they believe in it. So the oppressed hang, hang uh, is the one who holds the truth. Now, uh, and you have a clash here because the feminists believe that biological sex is real. While gender is a construct, gender is is the gender identities are construct created by the patriarchy, who basically uh, create the the may the the man uh, the, the 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 identity of the man is the one who is the dominant, and the identity of the woman is the one who is submissive, and and uh, and and that's how uh, and they say that this is how the patriarchy shaped us, yeah. So the gender is, is a complete social construct. It has nothing to do with our nature. Mm-hmm. Now, trans uh, creationists claim that we live in a, you know, in a cis-normative system, a system um, in which... Uh, and, and, but, but they say that the gender is real and biological sex is the construct. Uh, so, so the, what they feel, uh, the, I mean, because for them, you know, I, if I feel that I'm, I'm, a, I'm a woman, well, I'm a woman, uh, because that, 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 that what counts. Uh, what counts is how I feel. What counts is the gender, not, not the sex, not, not, not the biology. So you have, so you have a, contra- a self contradiction here within the social justice movement. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, one, one side says that uh, uh, sex is real and, and gender is a construct. The other says that that the gender is real and sex is a construct. Now, since the rules are that uh, the oppressed is the one who holds the truth. And since the Oppression Olympics declares that the trans is the more oppressed, gendered, more oppressed, that means that trans- transgenders are the ones who hold the truth. That means that the feminists are wrong. Um, and that's basically the death of creationist feminism. There is no way... Uh, I-, I mean, the only... Uh, uh, feminists now either accept it, either accepts it, and is an intersectional feminist and, and kind of uh, takes the back seat to, to the trans uh, and, and the you know the black thing and, and all that, um, or she denies the reality of of gender. Then she becomes a turf, and then she's uh, cancelled. And so, so that's uh, yeah, okay. So, so kind of we drifted to that. By the way, I, I talk about it in the book as well. Uh, that's one of the things that I talk about uh, because feminism does play uh, in uh, and and or, or everything does play in the uh, MCU. Uh, I'd say um, yes, it does. I mean, um, just thinking about Captain Marvel and other movies such as uh, yes, so 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 Captain Marvel. Uh, the thing is, the MCU is clever. Thing, the people who create the MCU are quite clever. So uh, Captain Marvel, th- there were a few movies made in, in the recent years in which you had total creationist feminism. So, so it was about destroying the male hero because the male hero you know, is a creation of the patriarchy. So you have mm-hmm. to destroy him to make way for the woman. Yeah? Uh, now Captain Marvel... He did something clever, very clever. Uh, th- there is a patriarch, a patriarchy there. The patriarchy is is, uh, is on another planet, so uh, it's the Kree. Yes, so she she's uh, she, in the beginning of the movie. She's not woke. She's uh, she she she's basically part of the patriarch of the patriarchy. And she, she accepts what what they tell her. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and and they kind of of diminish her, yeah. They diminish her powers. They they hold her down. That's classic creationist feminism. But they put it on another planet, and Earth. Earth is not uh, described this way. Earth is actually where a woman can. Uh, so so Earth Earth is is kind of a liberal. It's liberal femi- feminism. You know, feminism that believes that. It's, it's, it's evolution. Uh, liberal feminism, uh, the way I, I describe it, is believes that uh, it's not, uh, you know, th- there wasn't a, crea- a patriarchy. It wasn't, it's not creationist, but there is, you know, there was a, an evolution that created the, the genders as we know them today. Uh, the genders always change. And, you know, and, and you have, and you, 
uh, you have to basically try to change because because technology uh, creates uh, <clears throat> um, basically gives women the ability to do things they couldn't do before. Uh, so this is what liberal feminism is about. It's, it's about uh, uh, giving the women, uh, basically uh, uh, liberating ourselves of all the uh, ideas about, about the gender that, that were created in previous times and, and are no longer relevant and, and are holding women down at the time of uh, when you have great technology. And, and, and one, of the things that, one of the things I really like about this movie is that it celebrates aviation. Aviation was one of the things uh, that... Uh, basically enabled women, uh, women liberation because mm -hmm. in, in an airplane women airplane that do not, unlike previous uh, vehicles that do not require great physical strength so actually actually women had had a, even an advantage in in, a, in flying airplanes because they are smaller so they can fit in the cockpit better um, and, and uh, you know the, they weigh less and all that so women from the beginning of aviation women it, it was it was one of the you know women showed that they can fly planes and it, and it uh, and that's the 1920s it broke a lot of of stereotypes about women that they can't do uh, you know that they were not meant the the belief there back then was that they were not meant to go out and do those things and through uh, successfully uh, being su successful pilots they showed that they can so this is liberal feminism, yeah. So so it's, it's women going out and and showing that they can do things that uh, society did not believe they can because of ideas that were created at previous times when women really couldn't uh, do some, some uh, because uh, you know because it required you know sailing ships in the 17th century. It, it you you had to be a very special woman. <laughs> Yeah, you had to be a very special woman to be able to be a, a sailor in, in the 17th century. Yeah, um, but uh, but but uh, but but because of the of, of, of technology today, it's uh, you have uh, that uh, they have uh, the ability now to, to do basically everything. Uh, and this is and, and this is the feminism. This is the feminism that I support. Yes, yeah, it's, it's uh, empowering women. Yeah, so 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 they can do everything that they want. Um, and so, 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 so this is the, the earth represented basically this type of liberal feminism. So mm -hmm. uh, the viewer basically, so it catered to all viewers. The SJWs see the, could see the, the Cree world as a, uh, you know, an allegory of the patriarchy that, that we are all in. Whereas uh, from a liberal perspective, from my perspective, I saw it as, you know, a liberal society defeating a, a patriarchal society, uh, which, you know, there are patriarchal societies. Um, uh, like, for instance, so, yeah, for instance uh, in the Arab world, all that. Uh, which, that's a thing that I believe in, yeah? So, 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 so it catered to both, uh, so, so, so that's why it didn't anger anyone. Uh, now, the, the price they paid for it was that the movie was kind of not very good. Because uh, uh, you know uh, the, the hero is kind of boring because of it, uh, because she she doesn't go through a hero's journey. It's just she had to. The, the only journey, the only thing that she has to do is wake up of, of the of the patriarchal system that she's in. Yeah, and she and she immediately has the powers. Yeah, so so uh, so there's no no real hero journey. We don't at, at least we don't see it. We are told that she went through a journey. Basically, she she was, you know, we see it in flashbacks, but but it's not like, uh, I mean, what you uh, what was great about the, the the good MCU movies is that you you saw the 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 journey of of the hero, uh, of uh, like Iron Man and uh, Thor and, and all that uh, until they, they became what they were. Um, yeah, so, so <clears throat> yeah, so so that, that that's okay. So, Okay, so here this discussion is 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 like a discussion. If you want to know what the book is about, this is one of the things that uh, I discuss in the book. Yeah, uh, I'm having this discussion in the book when I when I when I write about Captain Marvel. That's a very nice way to put it. I mean, I and uh, I guess others in the channel and so on will root for the patriarchal for the patriarchal society, but you know, 
You can't make everyone happy. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, I'm half joking, you know, but you know. <laughs> so, uh, Zarathustra, what do you think the difference is between universe building and and world building? Because the the title of your book, of course, is uh, Universe Now. So, what's what's different? I mean. Sorry, sorry. What's the difference between world building and universe building? I guess. Well, the world building, I, I associate more with one creator. Um, creates uh, that's his vision, his world. Whereas the universe is uh, created uh, by many, uh, many creators, many mediums, many you know, uh, 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 okay. and and. Uh, it's it's more it comes from a, uh, it's more mythological so some the mythology you know it doesn't have one creator but have the the characters and and people kind of create stories about the characters and they all become part of the mythology and that and that was kind of uh, transferred into a uh, universe building thing where you take all those many many creators tell stories and okay so 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 you do have the one the one person right now, which is Kevin Feige, uh, who is who kind of says what is canon and what isn't, and and uh, uh, so, so it's kind of it's his vision, but uh, but there are many creators, and 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 he allows them a freedom to create um, beyond beyond the the the, the, the general stories that, that he dictates. He also allows them to create a lot uh, be, uh, outside of that, and. Uh, and in the future, and, and, and you know, like uh, see now that, for instance, Lord of the Rings, uh, which was a world created by one man, now it's you know they're taking the, the, the this world, and they start to to make more stories about it. Yeah, uh, uh, so everything now is being taken. Uh, Star Wars, yeah, was the creation of of Lucas, and, and now it's created by many people. So. so so, so it the it used to be a world created by one man, and uh, now you see you see that the process is that we think in, we start to think in terms of universe, where within the world that he created, people are expanding that world and and bringing in more of their ideas. So now it's kind of uh, it's not just the vision of of one person, but the, the 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 vision that he created is is being used. And many creators create their stories. So and, and uh, so so this is what this is why I call it universe. Uh, and and I call it universe because because that's what they call it. Yeah, and they call it the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, and and uh, yeah, so, so there was kind of a shift in because they were talking about world building, but then in the uh, in in the cyber period, you suddenly started to talk about universes. I mean, Buffy the Vampire Slayer was uh, was kind of the creation of one person of, of Joss Whedon, although he had more creators with him. But they called it the Buffyverse. So it's it's they start to talk about universe, and and and, and I ask myself, okay, what's the difference here? And uh, and and I think this is the difference. I see. Um, uh, uh, Earlier, sorry, did you want to say something? Thoughts? I wanted to ask one thing to clarify a second. Would you say that the books and the stories about Conan the Barbarian, for instance, those were written about in the 20s and early 30s by, and the first author was Robert E. Howard, but a lot of his friends. Uh, started also writing uh, in the same universe, like uh, Lovecraft wrote uh, in the same universe, wrote Conan stories, even if uh, that's uh, not very no, we very well known as a thing. Mm -hmm. Clark Ashton Smith and uh, such authors all uh, wrote Conan stories. Would you say that this is an early example of uh, universe building uh, in the context of uh, I guess pulp fiction or the early fantasy or early science fiction. And, uh, I guess the boundaries weren't very clear at the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, like like I said before, this is where it was formed. 
but it was uh, only the fandom basically uh, kind of uh, knew about it. Yes, so it wasn't. Uh, n- nowadays, it's it's the mainstream. It's it's you you. you People are looking now. I don't know how much turn... of fandom it was because it was pub. They were published in uh, journals such as uh, Weird, T- Weird, Weird Tales and so on, which were uh, which were yeah, pretty yeah. Were pretty big at the time. Yeah. You know. I mean, uh, yeah, mm-hmm. but it you know it there wasn't this idea that they the, 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 this idea that that everything has to be turned into a universe. Yeah. Mm. Every every one of these worlds created by uh, uh, I mean another place you can talk about is is uh, video games uh, you know all the the uh, World of Warcraft and all that it's 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 universes uh, that are being created and uh, and the, the other thing is that because of uh, video games um, we can now go into those universes. And this is another thing that defines it. Yes, so, so we 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 now we now we can now play in. So we we can basically now exist uh, inside of those imaginary universes. Um, and and I think that this is just the beginning. I think that universe the the, the 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 our ability to to live inside those universes will will become greater and greater. And I think we will spend more and more time inside those. Uh, because I believe that uh, uh, there is, I don't, I don't see uh, any better society that, than what we have today. I don't think we can create anything better, at, at least not in the near future, uh, in the in the foreseen future. Um, and so, so uh, the the, uh, the uh, next step is going is creating imaginary worlds and and, and spending our times there, our time there, and uh, you know just I don't know, with the. Uh, with with the, the the so-called real world being just you know the launch pad to to, to those uh, other universes, um, you know, I think I think people will actually and work inside those uh, uh, cyber uh, universes. Yeah. Uh, then... Yeah. So, um, is there anything else you want to? Oh no, I think her thoughts left. Um, anyway. So uh, earlier uh, you described pop culture as uh, bottom up, but um, yeah. isn't there also the argument that um, well, actually, like like even the term uh, teenager, like was a, a corporate uh, creation uh, by financial interest. So it, I mean, it, it, is it really bottom up? I mean, when the you know. I mean, is the Marvel Corporation supposed to be bottom up? Um, is what I'm trying to say, I guess. The uh, again, like I said, the, uh, the the term teenager was created by uh, by the industry, but uh, it was given a new meaning in a bottom up process by the youth itself. Uh, the youth suddenly t- took took the, the products that they created and and did something else with them, and basically forced the industry to start to create uh, products to to cater to its culture. Um, as and and the same thing goes. I mean, I mean the, uh, the like we said, the universe, Marvel Marvel Cinematic Universe uh, is not the first universe. It's just that they recognized. Uh, the the, uh, uh, the 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 that there is such a thing uh, all, that already exists uh, as as uh, that uh, you know universes and uh, made it uh, kind of more let's say let, let's say made it serious yeah made it uh, um, on a much larger scale of course and, and uh, put a lot more money uh, the, the obscene amounts of money into it yeah. It's, it's unbelievable to think that that a movie can cost four hundred million dollars. Uh, one 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 movie, um, uh, and uh, so so the thing, uh, uh, the 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 idea of the universe did the uh, form in a bottom up thing, and, and 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 the reason why the worlds became universes 
became they became universes because fans started to write fan fiction uh, inside those worlds created by by single authors. Um, so and they exp- start to expand them. Suddenly, you know that there was uh, this, uh, and so this is bottom up. Yes, yeah? so, so so suddenly there was uh, many many authors all uh, writing within one uh, one universe created by someone. And 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 the, the Marvel Cinematic Universe is just the next stage where, where people who came from that uh, said, okay, now we're going to do it on a much more professional level. I see. Uh, thoughts? Would you agree with um, with Zarathustra that it was basically the, the youth leading the industry rather than the industry uh, leading the youth? Um, to buy product and to get excited for the next uh, product, I guess. I think in every such uh, social dynamic, there is a give and a take. On one hand, of course, uh, the let us say the initiative is on the industry because they are the ones go- who are going to present a product. They are the ones who are going to market it. And uh, oh, cats. And they are the ones who will establish a strategy of marketing, which uh, at the moment, uh, st- marketing strategies are pretty much an exact science. We know about supernormal stimuli, for instance, which, uh, which, is, a, which is becoming a pretty big uh, field in uh, psychology and the psychology of market. And in general, in neuro- and in general, more in general, in neurology, I would say, because it comes out that you don't uh, really have a choice about uh, which stimuli from uh, the external world you decide to pay uh, to pay attention to. If someone uh, is able uh, to make uh, s- uh, such as uh, to make an effective one, basically, to be short. So on one level, of course, uh, we have to consider that uh, the industry was um, was going to market uh, certain things in certain ways, and you were going to buy it, and you were going to buy them one way or another. On the other hand, however, the, with uh, with the passing of times, the same nerds who were educated by this uh, this marketing process uh, were the, became the ones uh, who who joined those same uh, those same companies in the end who who would write the script and would market the product. You can see this pretty clearly with uh, franchises such as uh, Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, Sonic has uh, sucked for a very very long time. And it's only starting to recover a bit, uh, a little bit now. When uh, those who were the fans uh, up to like ten years ago now work uh, for uh, Sony of America, and are the ones who know what uh, the who know what the youngsters want, basically. So I yeah, think right. it's no, it's more. Com- I think it's more complex than simply. Uh, saying, okay, no, look, the 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 industry caters to the masses. It does not mm-hmm. cater to uh, the few. And every... Uh, the ideas, the ideas come from in the bottom up. So people, so, so it's people create something that, uh, 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 you know, appeals to other people and they create the small subculture around it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that happens outside of the industry. Uh, then the industry becomes, when it becomes big enough, the industry becomes aware of it and starts to market it and, and uh, to the masses by uh, and and in the process also diluting it and and basically uh, you know uh, commercializing it and, and 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 it basically loses its uh, uh, its uniqueness. But it, it's always it always comes from 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 the idea, always comes from below. The, the industry comes second and 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 spreads it and spreads it to the masses uh so so and yeah like you said so things like i don't know who who initially wrote sonic but but the the, 
It's usually it's an, it's an idea of one person. It's not, it's not that the 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 industry uh, you know moguls uh, uh, meet and say oh, oh well, what uh, what character will we create? Let's create a hedgehog. No, oh, it's 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 someone comes with an an, an idea, and yeah. and the and, and and the idea finds you know fans, and then the industry sees that that the the idea is uh, um, uh, you know uh, successful. So it starts to market it and, and, and starts to also make uh, to popularize it also in, in the process to make, yes. to make it to appeal to, to, to the larger audience. And then it sucks. But then, like you said, the, the, the fans, the original fans who, who come and, and say, OK, well, let's make it better. Uh, so, so. I guess, I guess. Yeah, go, go. I'm sorry. I'm just going to. And just going to go full autist, uh, you go first. Yes, I guess the question why I asked is because um, the academic agent, for instance, uh, recently argued that, uh, well, when it comes to like the uh, 60s uh, counterculture, well, it, the youth didn't really, really rebel. They, they, were, they just did what. Uh, be back in. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Uh, the youth didn't really rebelled. They just did what their corporate masters did. The youth are basically gullible children. Um, and uh, um, for so, so, for instance, uh, things. The the reason why these things like jazz and whatever else, which uh, which some might consider consider to be degenerate, became popular is because they were astroturfed by. Uh, financial interest because of so basically they became popular because they, they were marketed but it doesn't like so basically what is marketed is essentially what becomes popular so so it's the industry which decides what what will become popular so well, academic agent uh, did not uh, research it uh, deeply enough i mean i mean look i uh again i mean i told him to watch my series on psychedelia but he didn't um so the, the, just you you watch my series on psychedelia where I give a, a much uh, you know uh, a much deeper uh, uh, um, yes you know, I've watched it yeah yes I've uh, watched it it is it is pretty yeah. good yeah yeah so, so and 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 the the thing that happened in San Francisco that that started to happen in, in you know in 1964 in, in San Francisco <laughs> The industry became aware of it only in 1967. Uh, it's uh, uh, it's not uh, no. It, it again, like I said, it always it's always bottom up. It starts from, from a little group of people, creators and fans, who find some sort of of, uh, of new sensibility of some uh, and, and new ideas and, and and hatch new ideas within it. And and eventually and and you know it takes time until until it becomes kind of a form. Take it takes form. It has an artistic form that can be understood, and only then the industry become becomes aware of it and starts to market it. All right. Um, uh, what did you want to? Uh, is there anything you want to add, uh, Zaratustra? Before I ask her thoughts, what what he wanted to say. Oh uh, no, that's the uh, that that's the theory basically. That and 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 and, and I expand on it in the book. Yeah, but uh, again, it's it's always the ideas that come bottom up. Uh, yeah, and the industry then uh, comes in and and just uh, uh, that, that that's uh, all, uh, that's always the way it happens. I mean, that's what happens with YouTube. Yeah, uh, yeah. So yeah, okay. So so uh, uh, YouTube was was you know there was it was the company and and. Uh, uh, but but so so they gave us the the, the ability to create videos. They, they had no idea w what will happen. They had no idea that youth will take will take this ability, and and create s s things that no one even thought would be interesting to anyone. And and you know and and just found millions of 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 uh, of, of uh, viewers to all sorts. Of, who thought that unboxing things will you know will be interesting to so many people? All all that stuff, yeah, um, and ASMR. No, nobody knew about it uh, before two thousand and nine. Yeah? 
uh, uh, the uh, then <clears throat> it became successful. So Google came in, and uh, we know what happened. YouTube. All right, of thoughts. Uh, what did you want to say earlier? Nothing. I will say that this happens a lot, lots of times, of course. I would agree, but I don't know if we, we can say that it happens all the time. I can think of many franchise, franchises that were being made uh, from top to bottom, basically. For instance, Sonic itself, uh, yes, it had a main artist that decided the, the design of the character and so on and so forth, but... Uh, it was also made uh, by it was also made by committee by Sony uh, by Sony basically to have a character that could compete uh, with Mario from Nintendo. The same uh, you can say with Pokemon. Uh, it was uh, yes, there is a main artist in there too. There is a, there is always I would say um, an art lead that uh, makes. Uh, the, the executive decisions, but uh, there is also a, there is also an element of uh, it has been made uh, acti- actively to be market uh, to be marketed yeah. basically. Okay, okay, but but uh, that's already created within an established medium. So mm. uh, you know the, the, when the industry already is uh, you know the the medium has been established, industry comes in and, and takes over it. Then yeah, and and then they they have to create uh, to to come up with their own stuff, and and uh, they still need someone to come up with an idea. They ha- it's not like they have an idea what's going to work. Mm. Yeah, they, they don't they don't know what will work. They just try things out, um, and and uh, basically uh, it's it's the fans that that uh, decide if it's good or not. Uh, there, there is no there is no law. Uh, the, the industry don't doesn't know what's going to work, um, I, I, or or it can you know offer you stuff that is tried and tested. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, there, there is you know you you can uh, the, the the stuff that is tried and tested that, that you know will will have a, will be entertaining and will find an audience, but but. but but that's uh, when it's tried and tested. It's, it doesn't have much of a cultural effect because uh, it's uh, because it isn't new. Yeah, so so it doesn't uh, really uh, change people. It doesn't have an effect on people beyond the, the, that they are being entertained by it. What uh, do you mean that by the medium was all, was already there? What medium are you referring to in this case? I'm not. I'm not familiar with Sonic. What uh, is that anime? It's uh, well, basically, it was a series of video games in the beginning. But uh, yeah, so you, have... you will say, but uh, you know, it was uh, still in a in a period in which uh, platformers were was Mario and uh, nothing else. Okay, so but you already had Mario. Uh, mm-hmm. And and no Mario came. I, I think Mario came out of Donkey Kong. Yes. Uh, oh yes, in uh, that sense, you could say that people liked Mario when they saw him in Donkey Kong and decided to make more, more games, and that became a uh, medium. In that sense, I would agree. Yeah, I, no, I, the, the medium is is video games, and and, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, uh, it's it, uh, p- people were just creating them in, in the in the garage. Uh, somewhere uh and then and then yeah it became atari and all that and, and then all the, the industry started and so so yeah so you have an industry and uh you already had an, a video game industry still uh, a lot of the things the a lot of the games created by the industry sucked and and, and anything and, and nothing that they did could could uh, uh you know convince the the the, the public to to to, to play them uh, we know that Atari that was, was destroyed by uh, the, the game BT. Of, hmm? There's clearly been a lot of uh, experimentation. That's for sure. Uh, so, so the, the the ability to to you know influence people top down, like mm-hmm. someone, like something. 
uh, I don't think there's much of an ability to do that. Um, like I said, you, 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 can, you can create something entertaining, which you know will be entertaining because you're, you're working you know, with, with, with a blueprint of, of, of things that work. And yeah, it will work and, and, and people will be entertained, but it will not, uh, they will not be crazy about it. They will not, it's, it's not, uh, uh, for, for, for people to, to, to actually be crazy for something, it, it's, it has to be something new. Something that will excite them, will you know, will will speak to them that the sound, that something that they didn't experience before, and for that you need someone to come up with an idea. Um, yes, and a lot of uh, yeah. So 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 yes. So it's and, and like I said, if if it's a pop medium, it comes it comes uh, from somebody working in the garage. If it's already a serious medium, so it's already you know. The industry is already involved and all that, so a lot of time it is someone who is already an established artist, and and they ask him, they commission him to do something, and he thinks, and and he and, and he comes up with an idea, and the idea either works or doesn't work. So is is the MCU uh, pop or serious? Uh, well, well, we're talking about universe building. Well, universe building is now in the serious phase. I see. Mm. I see. So it's mm. um, uh, earlier you said that um, you didn't think you you don't think that um, things uh, can ever can get get better than they are right now, or or, or that they they ever were better than they are now. Um, uh, as as uh, you know uh, as. Uh system yeah system of, of governance uh i believe the, the liberal democracy uh i, I think is uh, you know I, i can't see anything better and maybe that thoughts i have to think about it please go on for, for a bit i know uh, that I... you guys are kind of uh at least you i know that you are a bit of a more of a reactionary and, and you don't uh, you you want to go to to something more The monarchy, what 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 to do like? Uh, but... Yes, a monarchy would be fine. Yes. Um. Oh, all right. So, yeah. I, I, basically, it's uh, I came to this conclusion. Um. Because I just I just don't think uh, that that the other side will ever uh, leave leave the woke uh, crowd will ever. Uh, leave uh, or the left or whatever you want to call them. They, they, they will ever leave us alone. It's either them so, or so us. So you have to continuously fight them and defeat them. Let's play whack a mole with with all of the ideas that they come up with. Um, yes, or, or... Like, uh, I mean you can play whack a mole with uh, their ideas all you want, but the media are still going to act like they won because there's no real dialogue going going on. So the perception oh, is that we have been losing for the last 200 years, but uh, the reality is that uh, the the reality is that they haven't been uh, doing much of work in those same, in the same time. Uh, who? <laughs> I, I, I didn't only get... perceive it at least because you know. I mean, no. we live in we live in free societies, and 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 you can you you have the freedom to to pursue. We do, and and, and yeah, and and, uh, and and it has its problems. Not perfect, but uh, I don't see anything better. We do live in free societies. Do we? Um, okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah, that that sounded a bit um, sarcastic, but whatever. Mm -hmm. mm. What what made you interested in the in the Marvel Cinematic Universe in the first place, Zarathustra? I talk I talk about it a lot in the book. With that, since I come yes. from since I come from the rock and roll period, I was not really interested in all of that. I was not interested. I, I never read a comic book. 
uh, a lot of it because I I live in a country where you know we didn't really have comic books uh, because uh, because comic books were seen as something that only children read and and you know uh, it's not a it's not an English speaking country so uh, so so comic books weren't really marketed here uh, so so the American you know DC and and Marvel were not marketed here because you know the the kids who could not read them so I, I was not really familiar with it uh you know I, I knew you know i knew the hulk and, and spider-man i've heard about captain america and, and that's basically it um uh for, for marvel yeah, for dc you know the, the, of course other heroes um and uh <clears throat> and and the the the, the the book uh, one one of the of the of the of the narratives of the book is is how they won me over uh which is uh so and through that i i, I also tell the story of how basically the cyber the, the logic of the cyber period took over from the logic of the rock and roll period uh and and uh um uh, through that story of of how Marvel's, uh, I mean the the, uh, the the subtitle of the book is uh, "All the Marvel Cinema." The universe uh, changed. Follow how they did it. They started with some movies that appealed to my sensibilities. Uh, that were realistic and uh, and kind of uh, in, in Iron Man is very much in the reality of its time. It has, you know, it's 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 metal, you know. It's so it's it comes uh, still a, a rock and roll uh, thing, um, and uh, and then slowly, slowly they started to weave in all of the uh, the universe basically. Uh, and and the uh, the world of of Marvel, and uh, and and the new logic, the and the cyber logic, and uh, so so this is the uh, and 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 I tell the story of how they won me over because I didn't watch Iron Man when it came out, um, and uh, basically the it was the buzz of uh, around Iron Man two that first caught my attention. And, and it caught my attention because I was already watching YouTube, so you know it was there was a big buzz on, on YouTube that Iron Man Two is coming out. Um, so that's why you know I, I kind of I watched it on television, yeah, when it came on uh, to 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 see what it's about. And then they slowly slowly won me over. The Avengers, of course, uh, I went to see it in this in the theater because it was this. A huge phenomenon, and 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 I loved it, and and yeah, and, and I tell that story in the book. Have you read any of the comics uh, since you watched uh, the MCU movies and stuff? No, because uh, it's it's such a big world that uh, I uh, you know I don't have time to go into it. Um, and, yeah. yeah. So. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, thoughts uh, from my understanding. Uh, you have actually read the comics, right? Yes, I've read uh, quite a bit of them in the course of my life. I've uh, since uh, sold some of them because my house was cluttered, but, you know, I have, uh, I have read the comics. And uh, as someone who has actually read the comics, what do, what do you make of the MCU? Well, it was uh, pretty walkified in many, many aspects, but at least in the first uh, half, uh, the first movies, uh, there was also a pretty strong current of people uh, caring about, uh, about the universe, I would say. It was walkified that there was clearly some people in there that were that were saying we should make an, a scene in which we see that Black Widow is a strong independent woman and so on and so forth, as if it wasn't clear from the comics already. But 
at least in the first movies there was this uh, attempt to be if not literally faithful at least spiritually faithful uh, to the uh, to the original comics which uh, i appreciated at the time and uh, you know it wasn't perfect at the time either but uh, it was uh, it was something i'm not going uh, i'm not going to I'm not going to complain too much if people act- actually make the attempt, you know what I mean. With yeah, the, yeah. Yeah. the more the, the story progressed, the, the more the walkified uh, it got. And um, I prefer the th- I prefer the early the early movies in the DC in the um, Marvel cin- cinematic universe, let us say. Let us leave at, uh, it at that. Uh, could you give us some examples where you think in the latter half it got uh, vocified? Well, uh, we uh, we have already talked a bit about uh, Captain Marvel, and I, I agree in many uh, uh, under many aspects on what uh, Zarathustra said. Also, the, the generally the character of Black Widow has been uh, evolving. Uh, in a um, in a certain direction, let us say, and many other uh, female characters, there has been a general um, dumping down of some male character that uh, shouldn't be dumb, let us say. And in general, uh, but uh, you know, this uh, this has been happening to the comics lately. I've stopped uh, reading the comics after a while, to be honest, because uh, it's all, almost a vanguard on wokeness on that uh, on that uh, on that regard for some aspect. I think a good moment uh, to to draw the line was uh, Civil War. Between uh, we are still trying to make things uh, more or less uh, more or less faithful, faithful, conforming to the spirit. To uh, we are going, uh, we are going to enter your mind, and you know many examples. I will say. I see. Um... I think I think the I, th- I think a lot of it is things that you are reading into it, uh, mm. and uh, b- because of this, uh, you know, b- because because the, there's uh, on the right today that there's this uh, belief that Hollywood has an agenda. Uh, I don't think Hollywood has an agenda. I think it's just uh, you know they just want to make money, um, and uh, the the yes. So, so look. Of, uh, 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 mm-hmm. it's it's not nothing that I saw, no movie MCU that I saw was woke. The and and mm-hmm. um, if if there are some elements which are in today's culture that entered it, yeah. So yeah. So what can you do? Uh, but but it's not. Uh, it, it was not enough to to ruin the movie. Um, and. Uh, and look, part of it is, you know, let's say uh, sexuality in movies uh, has changed. We we, we don't, uh, and 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 that's again, it's it it is because uh, cin- cinema changed. Uh, it used to be cinema used to be the place where people would go uh, to to see, you know. Uh, See naked women, basically. It's always the uh, leading, the, the artistic medium in the pop and, and serious phases. Uh, it's where you, people go to see, uh, you know, to, to also get sexual gratification. And uh, so, so the movies would cater to them. Like in the 19th century, why would people go to museums? Yeah. Many of them mm. went to museums to see pictures of naked women, uh, paintings of naked women. This is what you had back then, yeah. You didn't know. Yeah. Um, and and so, <clears throat> and and you knew that. Uh, and again, again, this was uh, the the sexual revolution, yeah, in in, in the, the the rock and roll period. So cinema was part of it. It was about breaking uh, 
breaking you know sexual uh, taboos and all that it was exciting and uh, you you had to have the uh, uh the actress willing to do so willing to go that extra thing that has never been done before and there was always a danger it could make her but it could also break her uh, got, uh and uh, some actresses were ruined for for doing things that were sexually daring on on, on the screen and some actors uh, and some actresses uh uh, you know, <clears throat> it helped. It helped the career, uh, <clears throat> uh, and 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 that period is over. Today, we well, to 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 for, you know, for porn, you go to the internet. Uh, so, so actresses and 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 you know and and cinema. So now, it just feels gratuitous if you would sexualize the character too much, and uh, and because of that, so so uh, the, you know. You have to accept that characters will not be as sexualized as they were, for instance, yeah? Uh, so so I, I'm okay with that. Um, so, you know, Black Widow was a lot sexier in, in uh, uh, the first couple of movies that she, were, she was in. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and, um, hmm? Yes, absolutely, because she was less woke. Well, I don't see her as woke. I, I, I mean, I, th- I think she, she, her personality became a lot more interesting. It used to be this, uh, uh, because she would basically hide her personality, she was just this uh, assassin. Uh, and, then, and then, you know, she, she started to come out of her shell. Uh, and I don't see anything woke about her. Uh, I, think a very, I think a very interesting woman. Uh, sensitive and interesting woman. Um, uh, the uh, uh, she actually has a he, uh, hero's journey, yeah, like oh, Captain yes. Marvel. Uh, I wouldn't say that she doesn't have a character development, she obviously has. It's that uh, she goes from uh, spy, set the anonymous, as a spy should at least in the beginning appear too, because else she's doing a shitty job at being a spy, we would all agree. But uh, her evolution in the comic goes to... Who's there? Okay. Uh, sorry, just me raging again. Okay. <laughs> Alright. Sorry, go on. Yeah. Uh, the evolution in the comics, in the comics, in the course of various decades in which uh, she was in, goes uh, through various stages of her uh, basically discovering the fact that uh, her femininity, more or less, she becomes more feminine rather than less. The more you know her, because she is a spy and she is a Russian agent and she's badass and so on and so forth. But the more people write about her, the more they characterize her as a, as a girl, as, it, as it's only proper, basically. You can, uh, she will be, still be different from a, male cha- from a male character in the same, in the same situations, basically. And she has various moments of, uh, in which she shows vulnerability to various male characters and so on and so forth. That is, yeah, well, I think, only I think that movie. happened in the movies as well. Yes, she, she is. in the movies it's framed like, uh, oh, I am uh, being... I am being so. I am being uh, fucking oppressed, and now I have to say things to people and explain myself. You know, it's not really a bit to me. Yes, it's very different from the. Perhaps it uh, jumps to my to my eyes because uh, having seen the character bot in the comics and uh, yeah, okay, it jumps you have, more. You have, you have to you have to forget about the comics when when I mean, it's 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 a different. Uh... This is a good. This is a good. Uh, obviously, I should uh, consider the movies on their own for the quality. Yeah. But you know, I can't also. I also can't forget. I have read the comics because I have. Yeah, but but uh, I mean, it's it's movies is its own thing, uh, and uh, so and, and and I think that uh, Natasha is 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 a very interesting character in 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 the movies, and she she goes through this transformation where she becomes, I think, very feminine. I think she she's you know becomes a loving woman. 
uh, a woman who is kind of, you know, kind of full of love for her friends, and and uh, whereas before she was this. Uh, uh, I mean, very... in only friends, yes, but um, you know, there's this whole arc here. I don't remember the title track, uh, Guardian Devil from uh, a Dead Evil comic, very good, in which she is basically the Dead Evil. Uh, like um, intimate friend, you will say, and so on and so forth. And you, I mean, uh, a character goes places in that comic, even if uh, she's, uh, she's not a primary character because the story revolves about, around uh, Devil, uh, being Devil, yeah. having a well, look, and look, so on. There is definitely a problem with female characters in, in Hollywood today, and, and I write about it in the book, yeah. So I, th- I think within the uh, re- remember what happened in uh, Age of Ultron, uh, where Joss Whedon was attacked viciously by SJWs because there was a scene in which Natasha is being, you know, saved. Uh, she, she's she's imprisoned and, she, and she's being saved by, uh, by the Avengers. So oh my God, he made her a damsel in distress. Uh, all that nonsense. Yeah, so so when you when you have this nonsense going around, uh, going on, it, it does yeah it does harm female characters, but uh, again, I, you you see it uh, against the comics. I see it against other movies. I, I see I, I judge the MCU against the other things that are going on around in Hollywood, and I think the MCU is doing a much better job. <laughs> Of uh, of not bowing yes, to the woke. Yes, I can agree. On that, I can agree. There's uh, relatively less wokeness in the uh, in the in the Marvel comic universe than there is uh, in uh, many other franchi- franchises. On that, I, on that, I can agree. Like there's uh, there is a lot less uh, wokeness in anime being uh, being uh, an Eastern uh, art form or medium. Let's call it medium. No, I don't want to appear like a web calling anime an art form. But you know, there's a, there's a remarkably less uh, less wokeness in there too, since yeah. it's come from, from another culture. On that, uh, on that I agree. It's not as bad as in like uh, Star, uh, like Star Wars has been lately. Yeah. Zaratustra, do you think that the the the, the distinction between uh, pop um, pop art and high art has always been there or is this something which began at a certain point what was no, it's there always a... been there it's always I been see. there uh, Shakespeare was pop uh, I mean Mozart was pop um, like I said the geniuses always work within the mediums that are considered low brow uh, I, I write about it a little bit in the book. Yeah, I, be, I bring this example that in the 18th century, music was considered the lowest form of art. It was considered just mere entertainment. And that at the time, you had Haydn and Mozart and and, and the young Beethoven already uh, making uh, m- music. Um, they still um, um, they still perform uh, performed uh, for courts and theaters. Uh, Frequented by aristocrats, though. Uh, no, but but also uh, the, the masses were also aware of, of the yes, music. Of course, not... they were. Well, of course. Uh, and and Mozart was popular with the masses, uh, not so much with the aristocracy. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah. So um, the, the thing is, yeah, because the aristocracy, the, the elites. The elite come with an idea of, of what art should be like. Uh, and the genius always, always, you know, breaks the mold. And, 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 and uh, because of that, the, uh, because the masses don't, are not, don't come with pre, uh, preconceived notions of what it should be like. They just perceive the art as, as what it is and they enjoy it. Uh, and and uh, so they are the ones who the geniuses are appreciated first by the masses. But only later, the logic to understand the art is formed. Uh, and then, looking back, they are defined as geniuses. 
uh, Pots, uh, would you agree with that? Um, with that characterization? Well, I think yeah, there is that. Huh? Uh, sorry. It took, two, it took 200 yeah. years until Shakespeare was considered a genius. Mm-hmm. Mozart, it took about 100 years. Uh, I see. Uh, so, uh, what were you going to say, uh, Fort? Nothing. I think uh, this, uh, this clearly happens lots of times. But again, it's, I don't know. It's uh, not uh, always... Uh, I don't think it's always uh, so clear-cut. Again, Mozart was chosen by the Habsburg to perform for them. And, uh, of course, uh, a lot, so, uh, of course, everyone knew who, the, uh, who Mozart was because... Uh, also, he was chosen by the Habsburg, and uh, everyone uh, knew, uh, knew uh, what the court was doing back then. But um, but primarily, I mean, of course he was, of course he was uh, appreciated by the ma- masses. But uh, genius like Mozart, I, I either think that he was recognized as genius uh, even back then because. Uh, there was the whole uh, Mozart Salieri situation in which uh, Salieri, the court, co- the, uh, another court composer, basically went into a mental breakdown trying to compensate the sheer talent of Mozart with uh, with uh, practice and uh, with uh, hard work, but he just couldn't because uh, Mozart was a genius and everybody who, me- who met him. Uh, and uh, heard him talk once, uh, understood this. So I agree that this is something, uh, this phenomenon that you're describing is something uh, that happens very often, but I, know, I don't know if, I can say, if you can say that it happens, uh, that it's always what happens, basically. That is, I like the, I like the analysis. I don't know if it's uh, one, if uh, you mean it, uh, it to be one hundred percent reliable or not. I don't think it's pretty it much one hundred percent. Yeah, pretty much one hundred percent. Again, no, I'm not talking about one artist. I'm talking about the medium. Yeah, medium. Uh, yes, the courts had mu- music, but music was not considered. High, you know, uh, it was not considered, uh, uh, you know, it was, not, was not really highly regarded as an art form. Um, it, it was just seen as entertainment for the courts, you know, it, it, for, for dancing, you know, just uh, for uh, the, 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 the basically the symphonies uh, of the 18th century were written as, as uh, uh, Something that for the for the, for the nobleman to dance to. Um, that's why they had several parts symphonies, yeah, because every every part was a different dance. Mm. Uh, and and then you know came the Mozart, and then Beethoven took this and 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 just made it into something else, and 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 just for, that represents the vision of the artist. Uh, so yeah, <clears throat> um, it's really a bit, a little bit conflating uh, chamber music and court music. But uh, yeah, if you want to talk about music as a medium, uh, that is, uh, I mean, we can stay here all day because uh, it goes back to the to uh, to Sumer and so on and so forth. But yes, I, I like your analysis. I'm not, uh, I'm not, uh, go, I'm not trying to be overly critical, but you know. No, when, I, when I talk about music, uh, I'm talking about uh, instrumental music. Mm. In the 18th century, yeah, in, in, instrumental music was seen as uh, as the lowest form of, of art. Uh, you know, th- there was more highly regard for, high regard for opera and for uh, you know song, uh, but uh, instrumental music was seen as just something that moves the uh, uh, the emotions. And is not, and uh, does not connect you to the divine, which was the thing that art was supposed to do, according to the elites. Yeah, um, and it, 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 it was only that, uh, it, art is supposed to. It's only when the people, in the sense of. Uh, 
you know, yeah, at the very least, if you are an atheist, that something uh, make you think of something greater than yourself uh, to act instead of uh, your uh, normal life and so on and so forth. Yeah. It's only, it's only when uh, the Romantics came in the beginning of the 19th century and they, and they started to write about music as something that connects you to uh, the sublime. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and, uh, yeah, because, because, because logic changed, because this one modern logic took over uh, from mm-hmm. classic logic, from that classical logic. Uh, so so uh, suddenly it was they were capable of thinking of music as something divine, as something uh, lofty uh, and sublime and all that. Um, and then they looked back to and, and so again, but but Beethoven was was the uh, uh, the, you know, the composer that uh, they looked up to as the one who is represents the uh, the highest form. And and Haydn and Mozart were seen as leading to Beethoven, uh, and and yes, and, and it took time. And uh, you even in the middle of the nineteenth century, you read, let's say Wagner. Uh, Wagner was writing about music, and he was writing about Mozart again as as someone who wrote, uh, you know, kind of fluff, uh, kind of a. Uh, uh, Light music, yeah. He, he saw Mozart as, as light. Uh, it, uh, <clears throat> yeah. Yes, uh, Zarathustra, I, I remember that you made, you, you said something like that um, the elite uh, have something against uh, a comedy and, and prefer tragedy. Yeah. Drama, yeah. And I, I think you also, you, that you, you went as far as to say, I, I'm not sure it's been a while since I read it, but I think you, you, you went as far as to say that comedy is better than tragedy. Or do you think that they're the same? Yes. I think, I think comedy represents reality better than tragedy. I don't think, I don't think we live... See, but this is, of course, because I'm Nietzschean. Uh, and... Uh, um, because the idea was always that tragedy, and this goes back to Aristotle, that human uh, human existence is tragic in nature, and because of that, tragedy is the art form that represents it best. And I think that uh, no, I don't think that human human existence is tragic. I think it uh, you can live a happy existence. It's more like a comedy where usually you you know you have you have bad things happening, but eventually it's good. Eventually it's uh, you know you have a happy ending or or you know so, so in comedy the, the the bad things get get resolved and 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 you and and it's essentially you have a happy uh, uh, life. Yeah, and I think that uh, you know my life is happy. Yes, yeah, so, so and I think that that. Uh, you can live a happy life if it's all it's all in your in your mind yeah if if, if you just uh, adjust your mind correctly you will be happy uh, this is the, the human condition the human existence is a happy one unless you kind of you know unless you adopt uh, you know uh, ideas that uh, kind of make you uh, miserable of course, some people are miserable because of uh, of their condition. Yeah, some people are just uh, you know have a bad l- bad luck, but uh, to be born uh, into a bad existence. But uh, but but uh, most most people, I think, uh, live a happy existence. So th- does that mean that because it is uh, because comedy is is more reflective than tragedy? Um, of real life, does that mean that does that make comedy better than tragedy? Then, uh, I don't think I said better. I, I think I said just you know that it represents 
life better. Uh, it, it represents it, it's more yeah more reflective. Uh, it's, I, I'm not making a judgment uh, an, an artistic. Uh, I don't think you can uh, compare the two and say aesthetically this is better uh, uh, because everyone you know each has its own rules and uh, and you have you know great tragedies and all that. Like I said, comedy. I think uh, I, I'm I'm reacting to the idea that that tragedy is you know is loftier than comedy because tragedy represents uh represents human the human condition better which which was the idea that uh, always uh, was always kind of uh, like I said since Aristotle uh kind of was was by the elites that's how the elites saw it uh, and 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 I'm saying no and and you know Nietzsche said that uh, the the it's Zarathustra. Uh, uh, actually, no. It's it's an Nietzschean thing, and to basically to to turn to turn it around and and say we we we've, we've uh, for, from to to pass from the tragic age into the comic age, and I think that pop is definitely com comic by uh, comical by, by nature. Yes, pop. Uh, uh, it's 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 mostly comedies. Uh, it's mostly happy, and uh, <clears throat> and and I think that uh, we live in in an age of uh, comedy where, where you can be happy unless and if you're not happy uh, again some people um uh, you know <clears throat> have bad luck but most people can be happy. Uh, not... No. Yes. So. I mean, uh, thoughts. Would you agree that um, that I, I guess that comedy is more reflective of uh, life than tragedy? I am. Um, look, first of all, I would like to clarify that Aristotle doesn't exactly say that the tragedy is better than comedy. As far as I understand, uh, Aristotle. I've been reading uh, pretty, a lot of Aristotle, to be honest, but uh, I don't, uh, you know, I might be wrong. I think he just, uh, in his poetics, uh, he traces the, um, the origins of both, basically from, um, ritual, from rituals, public, public rituals that were held uh, in Greece at the time, and uh, from, uh, in particular, Dionysiac or panic yeah. rituals. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Of the comedy and uh, but for and from um, from uh, funerary rituals for tragedy basically, and he says that uh, he would agree with you that comedy reflects better the life, uh, the the occurrence and the tra and the various the stuff of the life of uh, normal people. What he means to say is that the tragedy is meant to represent. Uh, Big historical moment, big historical moments, basically. In tragedy, you talk about the zero that ends up in Hades, uh, and about uh, the uh, the situation of his life that led it to uh, that led it to it. It's, uh, it's not meant to be simply, you know, uh, comedy is happy and uh, tragedy is sad. It's meant to be that comedy is about. Uh, the glorification of life as a process and uh, live uh, live the moment to moment, in which I would I would say you pretty much agree with uh, with him in, my, in many. I think you pretty much agree with he, uh, with him on this. While uh, tragedy is meant to talk about archetypes, it's meant to talk about eternal stuff like. Uh, the condition of man that makes it that makes it so that even if I wanted to help my family and uh, my and my city, I ended up in Hades uh, in, by no fault of uh, by not for, no fault of my own, and now my spirit will haunt these halls because I have died uh, with an incomplete mission and so on and so forth. I think this is. Uh, I think it is is what uh, Aristotle means yeah. when he talks about. Yeah, and, uh, yeah and, and I think, and, and I think by that he says that basically the, the, the implication is this is the the, the, the a deeper. Yeah, it is. This is mm -hmm. uh, the human condition. Uh, the uh, the human condition is tragic. Um, 
uh, and so so and, and uh, you play, and we pretty much I all agree with Aristotle in here. I think on this uh, comedy represents. Uh, you know, facts of life, but uh, on the vulgar level, if you want, it's uh, more successful for this uh, probably among uh, the uh, normal people. But when you sometimes uh, you will feel like uh, man, got to talk about the human condition because today I feel the spleen. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, well, well, I. I claim that uh, the human condition is comical, so, so uh, and and can be, uh, mm. and and uh, again, this is Nietzsche. Yeah, the, the Nietzsche is Nietzsche's mission was to turn life into comedy, mm. um, uh, to take the tragedy and transform it into comedy. Uh, that's the because gay side. To, ni- to nihilism. Not nihilism. That's the gay science, yeah. To to, to create values, that uh, uh, turn everything into into uh, in, into a source of happiness. All the things that uh, uh, bring you misery, you uh, by you know creating you 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 basically think differently about them, and then uh, you realize that they are a source of joy, actually. Um, Isn't so, it a bit of a stoic perspective, though? And uh, Nietzsche was pretty critical of stoics. Um, he was critical of everyone, but he also took from everyone. It's not. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, uh, and yeah, and, and actually, it. actually, if, mm-hmm. I, I, mm-hmm. Remember, I remember I read Marcus Aurelius, and I was amazed how mm-hmm. much he preempts Nietzsche in many in many ideas. Uh, mm-hmm. um, yeah, uh, so yeah, Marcus Aurelius, best emperor, I would say, one of the best. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so, yeah, so, so this is uh, just uh, so, so this is what I mean, yeah. So, so I, I'm since I'm Nietzsche, and, and I think that, uh, and and I think that our 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 no, the twentieth century, the, the pop culture, has kind of, has been Nietzschean in, in a way. It's been Dionysian. So, so, mm. um, and and because of that, we live in in, in a comical uh, society, in a society that is more in a, uh, that is more uh, that, that comedy reflects better. Uh, I think we live a good life, and uh, uh, and comedy reflects it better. Uh, the, the whole idea of tragedy you know, it was very much in the modern age because the you know the, the modern age was about creating a perfect world about being heroic and all that and and ended in failure after failure because of that uh, you know tragedies uh, kind of spoke to them uh, but i'm not i'm not in that mindset that we have to create a perfect world so uh, and comedies are not Comedies don't try to create a perfect world, yeah. Mm-hmm. They just—it's just about just about living your regular life and and uh, mm-hmm. realizing that that's enough. Uh, that yeah. that's good enough. The circumstances you find yourself in that often are uh, funny, sometimes uh, sad, but uh, yeah. eventually you still go on on living. Yeah. Yes, on that we will agree. On that uh, we all, I think uh, we all agree on that. It's funny how Pirandello puts it on the difference uh, between um, humor and uh, comedy, if you ever heard about it. No. To no, Pirandello, humor is, um, is an expression of the thing that isn't. He wrote a whole book about this. It's an expression of a thing that isn't. For instance, he makes a... Uh, an example of something that makes you laugh, as in as in an old lady dressed like a young like a young girl, and uh, you know with uh, with the hair uh, painted and so on and so forth and uh, full of makeup. And uh, the image is ridiculous, he says, because uh, this this uh, this woman thinks she's twenty years younger. Look at her; it makes you laugh in the moment. 
But then he says, uh, you go from uh, comedy to humor when you realize, when you think about it, and it becomes the internalization of uh, what isn't. That is, you realize that perhaps, uh, perhaps this woman is dressing up like this because uh, her husband is a lot younger and she's trying to keep him. And she's afraid that she's go- he's going to have an affair if, uh, if she doesn't keep up and so on and so forth. So you still laugh. You st- it's still uh, comical. But it's a different ty- kind of comical that he call uh, humoristic, basically. That is also mm-hmm. a reflection, let us say. I think, I think you would like reading Pirandello on this. Okay. Yes. Right. Uh, I, well, I, I think... Hmm, I, I guess I, the SG, SJWs, at least... It, it, I don't know, it, it, it kind of feels a bit weird to use the term SJWs now. It, it kind of feels a bit uh, outdated. Um, but, uh, well, let, let's use it for now, because... <laughs> in many ways, but many are politically incorrect. <laughs> well, to be honest, uh, the term which I usually use is the left, but uh, mm. g- given, given that... Uh, uh, Zaratustra here is on the left. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I think we, we might have to make a, a differentiation. A- anyway, what, 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 what are on the left? Uh, you are. You are. I know. I, th- I. I mean, if you think you are on the left, of course, but you don't seem very lefty to me. <laughs> um, it's meant um, on the yeah. best way possible, said by me. Look, I'm I'm the left that believes in in bottom up. Yes. Yeah, so. Mm-hmm. so uh, uh, like if 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 I work for uh, no for 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 an oppressed group, the oppressed group first of all has to say that it has a problem. Okay, Ooh. it's not the, the that's the problem we know the the progressives and and all that. They 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 say that the system creates a oppression, and and they you know they say that the. the a black, even if, if the black people is, uh, if, if a black person tells you he's happy, he's not really happy. He's oppressed. Yeah, so, mm-hmm. so this is the kind of, of leftism that, that I reject. Yeah, to me, leftism is bottom up. If some, if some group of people comes and tells you, hey, we we have a problem here. We we are being oppressed in this way, and you look at it and you see that yes, there is, uh, you know, we are not happy because. Uh, society is not allowing us to do this, this, and this. Uh, and 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 then, as a leftist, you have to come and try to solve the problem in a way that doesn't create problem for others. Yeah, because that's a problem. Uh, uh, if 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 you know, you you have to find a way to basically create a new balance uh, for um, that 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 gives them the the rights that they. Uh, that they want, uh, without creating a problem. I mean, I mean, we see that now with the, with the trans question. Yeah, how do we uh, how do we recognize uh, the trans women are women while not uh, while still considering the fact that uh, a certain spaces, uh, you know, women spaces that uh, will be, uh, you know. Uh, it will be a problem if we allow trans men, if trans women, who, who let's say, present as men, who are not uh, to 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 enter. Yes. Yeah, so, oh, so yeah. So that's so that's something that, uh, as a leftist, you know, I, I think about how to solve. Yeah. That, that's the uh, to me that's being left. Yeah. That that's how. To, uh, that's that's uh, being a leftist. Uh, like I said, the the uh, progressives, the SJWs, and all that. They have a top-down thing where, where they where they want to change the system to make it not oppressive, and they believe that then everything will be okay. That you change the system, and you know it, it's nothing to do with human nature or anything. It's the system that's wrong, and uh, if you change, if you make the system perfect, then there will be no more problems. And and that's the leftism that I re- reject. Uh, if That's I may, a kind of left in the leftism today, to me at least, looks a bit like populism, which uh, apparently now it's on the right. But you know, 
yeah, I, I mean, um, you, you, we kind of got. Uh, I, I'm definitely in the middle of of the de- of of the uh, of of the previous uh, decade. Mm-hmm. People on the left were kind of uh, you know rejecting people like me, and telling us mm-hmm. you're not you're not with us. But I think that it's it's gone better now. I th- uh, have uh, you know you're, a lot of the anti SJWs of of them uh, have, have the now rejoined the left, and and it's mm. not that they uh, it's not that they become pro SJW. Uh, they, they still basically believe in the same things, uh, but uh, yeah. So so, uh, so so the left is at least. You know, online at least the kind of the online leftist community is better than it was five years ago. Uh, it still sucks, but uh, yeah. well, well, I think we can have a dialogue in soon because uh, this situation has has grown. I think very on all of us. They are independently of what faction one may identify with or not. It's not the student. I didn't want to interrupt. <laughs> Yes, I mean, I I don't think. Uh, well, what what I was going to say earlier was that um, SJWs are, are not good at comedy, at least. Well, not inten- intentionally, anyway. But um, <laughs> I I guess what happened in my case was that um, because I if I'm being a bit cynical, to me it looked like. People were turning back to the left because it seemed to me that it, I, I wouldn't say exactly grifting, but more like uh, if you become right wing, maybe YouTube uh, won't like you anymore that much. But uh, <laughs> other than that, it, it seemed to me that after after the 2016 election, I think a lot of people expected something to happen and but n- nothing really happened as I, especially on the right i would say so i think th- there has been a growing feeling that uh, well democratic solutions uh, there is no de- democratic solution like uh, we did our best we got our guy elected but uh, n- nothing really changed uh, they didn't even allow him to build the fucking wall uh, properly so, like, w- w- why is it that uh, we should believe in democracy anymore? Uh, uh, c- can you see the 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 position our position, uh, Zarathustra? Yes, I'm actually uh, making a video about it now. Um, the uh, uh, <clears throat> the again, wh- why are you even? Why did you even believe, think that there's a political solution in the first place? I, I don't believe in politics as, as a way to solve, yeah, solve things. Yeah, I, I believe in, in a culture war, which, uh, you know, takes uh, years. Uh, you just, uh, you, you, you know, you, you just insert uh, new ideas and, and you let them uh, battle. And, and uh, uh, this is how uh, uh, you change things. Uh, and... Uh, yeah, so I see no reason for for pessimism. So because, okay, uh, can people because people uh, why are people so pessimistic? It's not because of what is going on today. It's because of what they think will happen in the future. You don't know what will happen in the future. You still live in a democratic society, in a liberal society, and uh, uh, and yeah, you you the the, the you know it, let's say for instance censorship. Yeah, okay. So you have censorship now on YouTube. You still have greater freedom than you had before the internet. The, the kind of p- things that you are allowed to say on YouTube, you would never be allowed on television or radio. Uh, so the internet gave us greater freedom. So, so we, we, are, we are more free than we were. Now, now the, the problem is that... Uh, in the in the early years of the internet, it was the Wild West. You could say anything, and and th- this, but this can't last. Yeah, inevitably, w- w- when the internet became big, 
where when it starts to have a cultural, you know, impact, it's inevitable that you would have censorship. And uh, so, so, so what you do, you have to, you have to take a longer look and say, okay, we gained something. We have greater freedom than we used to. The the kind of, you know, you you, you say that right wingers, you know, kind of, uh, you you can still you can still uh, right wingers. You can still express right wing views on YouTube today that would have never been expressed on television or radio twenty years ago. Never, you would you would not be allowed on, um, and if you were allowed on, it was just uh, to make fun of you. Uh, so, so, what you what you what you have to you have to take the, this longer look and, and say we have greater freedom than, than before, uh, and and uh, can, and you know the, the fight continues. Uh, it's not perfect, the censorship, but we we do have greater freedom. So, so, so I don't see why the pessimism. Hmm. Thoughts? Do you? I mean, do do you have an answer to that question? I guess about the pessimism. I think. Uh, I mean, I don't feel particularly pessimist, but not for the reason uh, for the reasons uh, you would think. Because uh, I I see I see an, an irrational system that uh, is uh, slowly going towards uh, a people, and I think that uh, we may be particularly well positioned to exploit the upheaval, if you know what I mean. So I agree that I, I don't have particular reason to be we don't have particular reason to be pessimist, but not for the same reason that you say. Uh, uh. I mean, what do you think will happen after the upheaval? Well, there will be there will be a. There will be a reorganization of there will be a reorganization of society, probably on a more local level, which is uh, which suits us perfectly fine because uh, we have uh, more uh, you know more more the cultural influence outside outside of the big cities rather rather than inside. This has been a big series of videos from a lot of people. Like, we don't agree. Me and student in particular, we don't agree with everything uh, some of these people are saying, but, uh, you know, there is uh, some uh, good stuff. And, uh, yes, I pretty much look forward towards a reorganization of the West in, on a more uh, localistic basics, more localistic basic. I mean, I am, um, uh, you know, I have a... I believe in in nations, yeah. So so mm-hmm. nations are, and and and, and I'm, uh, I, I do agree that uh, the uh, the kind of globalist uh, approach is is uh, is detrimental to freedom, and and I believe in uh, no. I'm an Israeli, yes. Yeah, so, so here we have it's very strong that we have a Jewish national, a Jewish democratic state, and and we we understand that the nationality. Jewish nation, uh, it's a nation state, and and only in a nation state you can have a democracy, because mm-hmm. it holds people together, and the democracy, uh, you know, protects us from the nation, the nationality, the nationalism, going too far. You know, the nationalism can go too far and and, and you know uh, start to be oppressive towards uh, minorities or individuals, but uh, if you have a democracy, it prevents it. So a uh, democratic system. So, um, so yeah, um, and and I be- and I think that this is this is the solution. I, I think, and uh, uh, I'm actually say- I'm saying that in my new video. Uh, the the uh, you kind of in the West you kind of forgot what what nationalism is. Uh, mm-hmm. Kind of got a bad name after world you know after the two world wars, but actually the problem was never nationalism. Nationalism is the thing that arose against imperialism, you know, against the empires. Um, the, uh, and, and, you know, uh, nations define themselves and, and kind of 
liberated themselves from the empires. Um, but the problem was that imperialistic thought was still around. So, uh, so some nations became imperialistic, uh, which led to two world wars. And another thing that happened was the rise of race theories. So uh, some nations, you know, became racist. Uh, it, it, it became the the the, the nation, uh, you know, was became based on race, um, and that was also, uh, you know, played out in in Second World War in a bad way. So mm-hmm. nationalism got blamed for it, and actually the culprits, imperialism and racism. When you actually look at history, you see that after World War Two. Imperialism and racism were kind of uh, put, uh, you know, put to rest, and what emerged were the nation states. And for decades, uh, uh, this led to 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 the uh, uh, the most peaceful era in human history. Because nation states don't really fight each other, um, certainly not democratic nation states. They're just you know happy to be in the. Uh, to to have sovereignty in the land, um, uh, but but uh, yeah, now now you have the undermining of the nation state, um, with all those ideas of globalism and multiculturalism, uh, and and I think the solution should be a return to the nation state. I don't know what you mean by more local. I, I, this is to me the the return to to the more local. Yeah, the the, the, the nation state. Uh, you're talking about something even smaller? Well, it depends from uh, the situation of each people, clearly. Some people uh, are clearly fine uh, with their uh, nation state as it is now. Some of the mm-hmm. people are uh, now like many, uh, now like for uh, many other, uh, for much time, let us say, basically living in empires that contain more than one nation state, if you will. You could make the example of the United States. The United States is clearly pretty divided in itself. They even had a a civil war that was pretty famous. I would argue that if you were to divide the United States in actual nation states, you you would uh, come out with four or five or something like that. Or in other places, you could uh, have, uh, I mean, for instance, I'm Italian. I will, I'm in a position to know that uh, this, uh, the Constitution as it is now, the Italian Republic, uh, it's made to, it was made to, let us say, advantage at certain groups of people over, other, over others, let us say and to basically make the govern the nation in itself difficult to govern because after world war 2 we had a big uh, communist party and we had uh, we were freed by the allies so basically nobody wanted uh, us uh, to one of the faction to win definitely and uh, so we have this wonderful system in which uh, we have to repeat the election every fucking year you know what i mean we will probably need something more local to uh, to work as a nation state. We will probably need uh, an organization based on a federation, for instance. I see. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not against it. You know, I'm not against the idea. If, I think, you know, the fact that uh, uh, Italy was formed uh, th- doesn't mean that that's the best. Maybe that there's a better. Uh, uh, you know, m- maybe it it will work better if you break it up. Uh, uh, you know, uh, even not. I mean, I mean, I mean historically, you know, you had Florence and you had Rome and you had, um, you know, Venice and you had Naples and yeah. So uh, you had different kingdoms, yeah, which came together, and and may, may, maybe you, maybe that doesn't work. Um, as long as it's uh, you know. Peaceful as as long as you you when you break up, you 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 form uh, you, you know you, you form agreements which which okay. allow you know everyone is happy with and, and allow every, everybody knows what what the, the you know the borders are and what what uh, you know 
uh, you know, all, all the relationships between them. Uh, I see no problem with that, and and may maybe it will work work better. It's, uh, you know, and uh, I think in the right wing too. I mean, generally in the world lately, we are pretty tired with uh, the idea of empire building because it's not uh, it has not worked uh, the best. Let us say. So yeah, I guess it is. Uh, I guess you can count on you can count on us on uh, enforcing uh, like borders once we decide on borders that make sense. Let's put, let's put it in this way. Um, and, and another, so I'm not I'm not going to lie, but <laughs> if you spend a lot of time on um, right wing servers, I mean I, I mean not not just right wing, but uh, reactionary. Mm -hmm. um discord servers and other places like that um, you will find <laughs> many anti-semitic jokes mm -hmm. um yeah and the other and... is a that says that we got to do this in the way <laughs> i can body and so on and so forth yes That's yes yes <laughs> but um i, I yes uh, but i i guess what I so what, one of the things which is common okay okay some people take them seriously some don't uh, mm. that doesn't matter but uh, one of the criticisms which usually these these jokes and sometimes even said seriously is that um, well uh, especially uh, you 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 will see like. Um, I think it's probably, I, I'm not sure whether there's a difference between uh, diaspora Jews and Jews uh, who live in Israel, but the, like, uh, like they will, in, in some of these memes, they will like uh, take the, um, somebody saying that, uh, well, th they are in favor of uh, Israel having uh, tight borders and all that, but uh, then when it's the United States, so well, th that's another story. Or, or when it's or when it's Europe, th then that's another story. Um, uh, <laughs> what do you have to say about that, the Ratustra serpent? Uh, but by the way, I can hear some echo. I don't hear. I don't hear. I don't have an echo. Um, yeah. Are you talking about the Jews uh, who are for? Uh, Nation state uh, for Israel and and uh, not for. I mean, sh sh show me those Jews, because the uh, the Jews who are against uh, the nation states are also anti-Zionist. Uh, I don't I don't see Jews advocate uh, you know, for for Zionism for 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 a nation state for for the Jews. Uh, and 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 believe in uh, you know. But uh, other places should not be nation states. Uh, it's 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 either either you are either you believe in the nation state or you don't. Uh, and and the Jews who are anti-Zionist, uh, also those who are undermining the nation states. And we're talking about diaspora Jews, yeah. Uh, diaspora Jews. There are many of them who kind of uh, it's. Uh, the Jews have as this concept of, a, of what is called tikkun olam, um, uh, which is which means fixing the world. It's part of the of the Jewish uh, religion. Um, yes, I heard of it. And, uh, and and you have okay, so you have so look Jews. When they lived in exile, yeah, well, uh, for two thousand years, um, so the, the 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 their existence was as a religion. Yeah, the the, uh, the nation was put in uh, was kind of uh, maintained through the rituals, but but there was no national exp uh, expression. There was no everyday expression to the national identity. So it was only a religious identity. Um, so. Uh, and 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 in the religious identity, this idea of fixing the world is was mainly through forming what is known as the mitzvah, yeah, the the, uh, the rituals, you know, the, mm. the, keep keeping the Sabbath, you know, washing your hands, praying. It's 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 a whole set of of of, of ways that, that religious Jews 
in, in almost almost everything they do in 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 the daily life, there's a certain way that in which they do it, which is uh, commanded in in the in the Torah uh, and in halacha, um, and they believe that through that. Uh, they are basically it's part of this mystical war of of uh, uh, of good against evil by performing the mitzvahs they are helping good uh, uh, prevail and and this will bring salvation in the end yeah it's it's part of this if 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 you don't keep the sabbath you are helping the forces of evil uh, in the mystical war against god yeah and yeah, all that uh, so that was Against there. God. Yeah. So that was there fixing the world. So, so it's it's this thing that you know it's uh, uh, it, it's 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 in their own closed world. So, so it doesn't really affect uh, the people outside of the Jewish community. Uh, remember, the Jews see themselves as the chosen people. The chosen people means. <laughs> The chosen people mean that uh, God cho- has chosen us to be the nation that will bring salvation. So we have greater responsibility. So um, and the responsibility is to carry out this mystical war uh, through you know, the things that they do. And now, the, uh, this, uh, this idea in itself, you know, is not... Uh, is not supremacist, but but the the, the problem is, you know, s- some uh, Jewish Jewish uh, strands uh, believe that because the Jews are, you know, maintain this, uh, um, you know, have this responsibility and maintain the, uh, the this uh, lifestyle, it makes them superior. So so there's this streak of of Jewish supremacy. Uh, to, this goes on in in the Jewish community, but uh, but again, it's not all Jews. It's uh, it depends which strand of Judaism. And as long as it's as it was within their own closed communities in the ghettos, it had no effect. Now uh, the Jews came out, you know, uh, emancipated nineteenth century, and uh, and and you know also started to uh, lose the religion, uh, become secular. And uh, and then it went in two directions. Um, one was the Zionist direction, in which you know, okay, we 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 go back to you know to be a nation in our in our home in our homeland. Yeah, we 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 want our rights as 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 a nation, uh, and we managed to fight for them, and we managed to you know there was the empire, the Muslim and Christian empires that ruled our our country for occupied our country for two. Two thousand years, managed to kick them out and and uh, and reestablish herself. And and, and the, but the the belief in Zionism was that you know the Jews, since they saw themselves, you know, as as uh, you know, superior, we are going to to create a, a country, you know, an, an ideal country. Uh, we will show the the goyim uh, how it's done. Uh, we will not be uh, as bad as them, as bad as they are to us. Um, so this is where the, the kind of the, the the Jewish supremacy find its found its way in Zionism. But then, when you know, when you form the country, when you form the country, and, and Israel was, then you know, the Jews, uh, the Israelis, yeah, the Jewish, the Jews living in Israel realize that they are not better than anyone else, and uh, the whole idea of uh, the ideal state died out. And now we just want to have our right to live as a nation among nations. And you don't really have uh, this uh, supremacy thing. And, and also, Israelis are very much in favor of uh, nation states for everyone else as well. Yeah, they're not, they're, they are, Israelis are horrified by what is going on in Europe. How you're letting uh, immigrants come in and all that, and, and they're afraid... A lot of Israelis think that Europe is lost, uh, yeah. that it will be taken over by Islam. Uh, you know, it's uh, not that we are letting them, it's that uh, we don't have much of a choice because uh, we, for instance, you don't get to see the protests we make. You don't you may get to see people uh, protesting even in the parliament and so on and so forth. But uh, there is a plan 
and uh, we got the, uh, you know, <laughs> we got the follow it apparently by hook or by crook. This is why some people are a bit. Uh, one, 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 yeah, one, one, one thing that can that can help is is a stronger national identity, which mm-hmm. will also be imposed on the immigrants. Yeah, to, to just t- tell the immigrants you have to become part of us. Um, uh, like this, I mean, in Israel we have twenty percent of of the society is, is Arabs. Yeah, of, of, this is the mm-hmm. Arabs and and eighteen percent Muslim, but. Uh, they know that they can't do anything because we have such a strong national identity that uh, they can't undermine it. Uh, and um, okay, so that was one strand. The other strand was the Jews that remained in exile. And okay, so they left the religion and they didn't go in the national way. So the only thing they have left is this tikkun olam thing, it's, you know, fixing the world. And that and that is why they join all sorts of leftist, utopian, aggressive movements. A lot of Jews, yeah. And, uh, yes, uh, and they fought for all those ideas, you know, from communism to, to, uh, to, to globalism. To, and, and, and Jews, because, you know, a lot of them are clever, kind of rise to the top of these movements. Um, <laughs> and, uh, yes, but... They are very much anti-Zionist and, and anti-religious, and uh, and also supremacist. And this is uh, the thing uh, you talk about: uh, Jews who are they hate Israel. Why do they hate Israel? Because we, you know, we affect their sense of supremacy. They believe that Jews are better uh, than others. And when they see Israel behaving like anyone else, they hate us for it, because we are supposed to be better. So they just, you know, they they, they actually they, they hate Israel because of that. Uh, now, I think that is this is uh, for for a Jew, for, you know, living outside of Israel, to advocate mm-hmm. to undermine the nation state in, in their country. Because you know, this is an experiment. There was never a, a, a democ- uh, democracy that wasn't, wasn't a nation state. You have this belief that uh, you can, you know, you can have a good society without a nation state. This is a theory. Now, if your theory will will fail, and and your country will collapse, you have a place to to, to uh, escape to. You can come to Israel. <laughs> And, and and but the the the, the people living there uh, don't have that that's their country. They don't have a place to escape to. So you're basically uh, treating them as as lab rats for your experiments. Uh, so I, I I see that as highly immoral and just morally reprehensible what these Jews are doing. Uh, and you know and, and they are attacking us at at the same time. But uh, they also know that uh, you know we will accept them if they have to run away from because uh, of what they're doing uh, to their countries. Um, uh, yeah, and, and uh, a, a lot of you know a lot of Israelis you know hate them, and and uh, uh, there are actually some who are calling to not let them in uh, if, if you know if they have to. Uh, uh, there are actually some you know Jews who are. Son and Grata in Israel and, and are not allowed to come to come here. Uh, Soros is not allowed here. Uh, Chomsky is not allowed here. Um, Based, you don't allow Chomsky. <laughs> yeah, th- that's I what like Israel a lot more now. <laughs> <laughs> mm. uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I, uh, earlier, um, Zarathustra, you asked for the causes of uh, pessimism. I think that's also the the mass migration is also another one of those causes because it's like okay we are waging this uh, culture war or, or whatever but but in the meantime they are importing millions of voters who, who will be loyal to them because uh, they get stuff from the government which the rest of us have to pay for so I mean yeah but you know the immigrants <laughs> eventually integrate and then they start to. Uh hate the new immigrants so so and then they go conservative so if you have a strong 
national identity which you know integrates the uh, immigrants into it and kind of uh, which and they start to think as uh, members of the nation uh, that prevents it uh, yes, that's the problem a strong national identity is exactly what we uh, what we can't have because uh, we are nazis if we have a strong national yeah. identity. This is the core yeah. problem, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, like, uh, yeah, that's what I said before, that you have this trauma from, from the world wars, mm -hmm. which made you uh, move away from nationalism, when in fact, the problem wasn't nationalism. It was racism and imperialism. Mm -hmm. uh, and nationalism is something else. When you don't have a national identity, this is when you, instead, you have to go for, to, for either for race or religion, you know, or class. Uh, mm -hmm. Hey, you, you, you mentioned the uh, academic agent. A while ago, I saw him made a video, he make a video, in which he said that uh, there are four classes, I think he said, that there, that there are the warriors, the, the clergymen, uh, the traders, and the, uh, and the peasants. Yes. I think he's reading Lenin now. And, and uh, he said there's always, one of these classes is always the one who is in control. And, and, and his claim was, okay, and, and in liberal democracy, we are led to believe that the peasants are in control, but actually the traders are in control. Uh, and, uh, and, I was, and I was like looking at it and saying, what are you talking about? In Israel, we don't even think about this. this. We, the Jews are in control. And the Jews, you know, the Jews have, have warriors and, and traders and, and peasants and but but it's it's us it's it's the, the, it's not divided into classes and uh, this is this is what happens when you don't have a strong national identity uh you 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 start to you know you start to to, to think along other lines other identities There's a, and for 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 my uh, for my perspective what he was talking about was was utter nonsense uh, it's not it's not something that my country, we, we even think about, I, I don't think about, you know, Jews who are, first of all, I mean, warriors, we are all warriors, we, we are all in the army, but, 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 uh, uh, and, and, but, but, this whole division of classes, or sects, or, when you have a nation state, the national identity is the unifying identity, and it allows you to then have different identities, you know. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, but but you still have the unifying thing that under underneath it all, underlines it all, and uh, and then and then that that allows you to have diversity. But when you when you don't have uh, uh, an underlining national identity, I guess this is what happens. You start thinking about about other people in your nation as the other. Yes, I, I think if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, um, that video that you're talking about, um, he, he literally took it from, or maybe it was another video similar to that where I was arguing about uh, society in different classes. Um, he, he literally took it from from Lenin, of all people, and uh, yeah, uh, but uh, what do you make of these thoughts? Are you in agreement or not? I mean, I think uh, um, an identity is made of many, of many things. Obviously, there is uh, the national and, uh, and uh, physical elements of being born uh, in a certain place from, a certain, uh, from certain parents and so on and so forth. Then uh, there's the cultural aspect. And uh, inside uh, of uh, one identity, there may, there may be some uh, divisions of class, but uh, yes, the objective will be and should be of having a body politic that is unified. This is one of the reasons why I've, uh, I've, argued, for, uh, the, I've argued for monarchy in the past, uh, even if I don't like, particularly like any novel that is alive at the moment, because... Uh, a uh, loyal family, I, I argued, uh, for fosters national unity because you have this central symbol of your nation. You know what I mean? A loyal family yeah. that represents the people, basically. 
even if the government is fucked, you can uh, you can count on the fucking queen. This was the the uh, this was the idea at the time, at least. It does. It, it has some problems, like any like any political organization. But you know, certainly, I think that uh, in the dissident right, uh, the unified team of the dissident right is people that see that feel the lack of something, basically. And then people uh, try to rationalize exactly what. But uh, we all agree that uh, the system as it is now is uh, basically anti- anti-human, I would say. It is, uh, it is not meant for our uh, well-being. It is meant for our eventual est- extinction as a people. This, uh, this leads people uh, also to like blame, uh, place all the blame on certain groups and so on and so forth. Which uh, this is a whole kind of words I don't want to enter in now, obviously. But you know, I think that if everyone thinks that uh, there is a pro- an, existen- an existential crisis of this uh, magnitude, probably culturally the nation should uh, should work on investigate that. But uh, we don't live in such times in which, in which uh, we can expect to happen, I fear. Yeah, well, I, I'm not sure that everyone feels like this. I think it's, uh, you know... Uh, the, I am seeing... Uh, it's, 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 it, it, it's, I think it's, it's, uh, it's a small group of people that gets amplified because of the internet. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I agree that there is a problem now. And, you know, there are all sorts of uh, ways to explain it, but... but like I said, I think that uh, strengthening a national identity, and and if you, and again, you, you can you can argue that, um, like you said before, that maybe the uh, Italian national identity is not strong enough, and and to have a real national identity, and to have a real uh, unifying strong identity, you have to go something more, even more local, yeah. Like uh, I don't know, a flo- flo- Florentian, uh, flo- you know, what's, uh, how you yes. call it? A Venetian or whatever, you know, like uh, uh, k- kind of divide Italy more. Uh, okay, that's okay. That's uh, it's, it's still the same principle that that you 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 have to have, uh, 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 like you said, a body politic and, and basically basically a, a country uh, that is. United that that is that has a unified identity, strong, strong unified, uh, unifying identity, which then allows uh, for diversity and for democracy. For you know, for 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 the uh, you don't you don't need a monarchy. You don't you don't need someone. You know, uh, I don't know if you if you mean a constitutional monarchy or, or an absolute monarchy, but either way. Honestly, um, I completely, I mean, every monarchy has uh, some uh, constitutional element. Yeah, but, but no, uh, in Israel, you know, like I said, it's a Jewish democratic state. We, we, we value democracy. We mm-hmm. believe that the people should be the ones, um, you know, who are the sovereign. Uh, and uh, and if, if you have the, that balance, between national nationalism and democracy, that balance works. I guess. Yeah. yeah. Zaratustra, why do you think? Why do you think that the mega movement failed? Uh, failed in. Uh, what What was it trying to achieve? Um, basically, isn't it what 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 uh, you were sort of arguing for, like national unity of of some sort? Well, first of all, a lot of them talked about not about national national, but about race. It was it was white nationalism instead of American nationalism. They uh, they, they were all boomers. It's for full of uh, boomers in them, man. Yeah. Um. Uh, so that was that was one thing, uh, and uh, yeah, a lot of. Uh, I mean, uh, I I didn't see anything uh, coherent about the MAGA movement. Uh, 
just saying make America great again is not uh, is not is not an, uh, a value system. Um, to, to me, it seemed something like uh, let's go back to you know when Reagan was in power, or something like that. Let, let's go back to then, or something like that. Th that that's the amount of talk that I think went into it. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. hmm. Zaratustra, how do you win a culture war? Uh, you just, uh, it's not about winning, it's about uh, fighting and uh, just uh, the, the uh, you know, uh, inserting ideas, good ideas into the cult, into the mix. And uh, and it balances out the bad ideas, and and uh, the culture just goes on, and it's good enough. Um, the, uh, what what would I want to say? Um, I, I I forgot. Uh, <laughs> there was something else I want to say, but yeah, I forgot. But uh, yeah, uh, yeah, that, that, that's what you, you just fight it, um, and. Uh, uh, I, I I mean I just if you remember I once made about four years ago I made a video called My Freedom Will Win um, in which I talked about that there are four four enemies of freedom which I defined at that time which was the Islamists the globalists feminists and the SJWs um, and I'm now uh, working on a video that uh, is a sequel to show where we are in our fight against all four. And I claim that uh, things are better against these four enemies. Or against all these four enemies, we we've made uh, advances. Uh, of course, uh, there are new enemies now. Uh, you know, I, th I think that uh, the, the big enemy in the future will be China. And the whole idea of planned economy, um, kind of a top-down and such, yeah, and such things. Hmm? The greater is that than such things that they want to sell us. Yeah, I think I think that uh, I, th I think that the left is moving away from the whole identity politics thing towards uh, the economy and towards and the idea of a planned economy. Uh, which uh, China is uh, is going to be the uh... hmm. what's wrong with a planned economy? Uh, it it uh, it doesn't work. The, the I believe in uh, you know uh, uh, you know uh, the the things uh, again bottom up uh, free uh, market. Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, so, uh, you know, there's a balance. Yeah, there's a balance between uh, the uh, free mind in 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 every uh, the, uh, Western society, uh, the country today. You have a you have both elements of free market and elements of planned economy uh, and socialism. Mm -hmm. uh, well, China is is just about just planning everything, and. Uh, uh, it works for China because they have. Western technology to rely on, but if you start to just impose economy from you will not have uh, innovation, and then you will not have new technology and uh, all that. Uh. As far as I know, China has uh, tight controls on the main uh, main companies and so on that uh, you know on which the government relies, basically, that are all in control by party members and so on and so forth. But as far as I know, at least, on the small and medium enterprise level and so on and so forth, it's not so plenty, or at least they try to, you know, let people have a fucking market because they know market works. Uh, market works. Yeah. So you know, yeah. It, uh, yeah I mean, it's, uh, it, it's again, it's possible that that uh, we will learn something from the Chinese model, uh, 
mm-hmm. but uh, no, but but I think that you know what the left wants is uh, uh, not all of them. You know. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. No. So I, I again, uh, you know, the uh, the Bernie Bros. Most of them are uh, not not for you know a dictatorship, not for a socialist mm-hmm. dictatorship. Um, so uh, m- maybe maybe there are you know and and you know the uh, like I said it's it's a balance between the uh, market and and the uh, planned uh, economy and and, and social uh, uh, you know and welfare programs and all that. Uh, every country, every Western country contains that balance. And maybe you know, maybe, maybe uh, it would be better to add more, uh, uh, you know, more socialism. Uh, but but uh, no, the, I think the, the there's a part of the left that wants uh, more than that. Mm-hmm. Um, and, 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 and look, China is a dictatorship, yes. Yeah, so so uh, it's totalitarian, and, uh, and and that goes hand in hand with with what they want. So, uh, mm-hmm. yeah. um, back back to. Yes, uh, sorry, but no, 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 go on, go on, don't worry, it's not important. Um, back to the to, to the so so I guess from what I understand, uh, you think that uh, free markets are bottom up, but uh, what about the argument that well, uh, the people um, who are at the head of all these corporations, well, they they have all gone through uh, the same uh, progressive uh, education so really it is it is the priestly the quote unquote uh, priestly caste uh, the universities essentially the academy which um, uh, which directs culture because people will, will, if you want to get to a, to a place of power usually you will have to go through the academy. I, well, you're not talking about culture. Uh, we're talking about economy. Uh, at culture, we, we had that discussion before about where does pop culture come from, but uh, which I claim is bottom up. Uh, as for economy, I mean, I mean it's, what's going on right now is not ideal, <laughs> uh, and 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 I think that. Uh, like I said, um, probably there will be some sort of uh, uh, reform which will take power away from those big corporation corporations. Um, it happened before yeah, in, in America, where, where you know uh, corporations had power, and 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 uh, then came a government and and just. Uh, some of the, that power away from them, um, and and I think that it will probably it will probably happen eventually. Uh, uh, people will be fed up. Uh, um, by the way, in the book, I think um, I think you made a distinction between what the right and the left consider to be the the elites. Um, yeah. What would be that that uh, distinction? Well, the, le- the 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 right believe that the elites are, are you know the academy, the entertainment industry, uh, uh, what else? I mean, the government. Um, whereas the 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 left believe that the uh, elites are the billionaires. Uh, the uh, political class that is beholden to these billionaires, um, the, uh, you know, the religious, the uh, uh, religious leaders, uh, the the uh, in military industrial complex, um, so which uh, so so this is the uh, uh, and and so and they all want you know. Someone to save them from from the elites, so they just uh, give more power to the elite, to their elite, to uh, save that from the other elite, save us from the other elite. Uh, well, uh, which of course they don't recognize that their elite is an elite. Yeah, they they believe that only the the, the elite are only the, the that other side. Uh, so, 
I mean, but, but I guess, I, I guess, I mean, what, what I guess somebody like A probably does re- recognize that, I would say, um, because he doesn't believe in, in, in things being bottom up anymore anyway. So, um, I mean, so, but I guess what is the problem with, if you know that uh, you are supporting an elite against an elite, because it's it's not like they are that they are the same, right? Um, just because they're both elite. <laughs> but yeah, but I mean, they're they're all affected by the same ideas. It's, it's uh, the the basically the elite, those who believe. Uh, how did I define the elite? Uh, The, the basically uh, the, the whole uh, the whole belief in the elite is the belief that the masses are stupid and need an and need an elite to to guide them and and you know part of my uh, pop culture ideology is that no the masses actually you know there's the wisdom of the masses it actually turns out that the, if you give the masses uh the the they actually come up with the best ideas um uh, they may be stupid, but they but it cancels each other out, and 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 uh, as 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 a whole, smarter than any one uh, individual, uh, or any class. Uh, uh, and and the belief of the elite is that no, that, that the masses are stupid and need to be led. Uh, and and uh, when you uh, and when you when you give more power to your elite <clears throat> to fight against the other elite. You're just giving power to that idea that uh, that the masses are stupid and need to be led, which is an idea that I I uh, reject. Um, and this, uh, this, is why, this is why, for instance, uh, this is why I believe in, in in complete freedom of speech. Yeah, I am against censorship of the web. I think that if you let everybody speak on the internet, yeah, you will have a lot of of racists and all that. But look. Uh, Racists could speak freely on YouTube in the in the first years. You had anti-Semites speaking out, and and you know, I, I, as a Jew, it actually made me feel good because I saw these anti-Semites don't have a big audience, even though they speak freely and all that. They don't have yes, a big but, audience. But, but it, it, didn't they get pretty popular with the alt right until they were censored? The alt right is not big. Yes, but did didn't it become smaller because it, I mean it, it was pretty big on YouTube. I mean there were a lot of people make, making fun of Sargon and go, going over to that side. The, the, big, they, the biggest, the, the biggest, the biggest alt right YouTubers had like one hundred thousand subscribers. That's all. The, the biggest ones. So that that's the most that they could get. It's not, it's not a lot. Not a lot. Uh, and. Uh, you see that they don't. You see that they're small. And 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 now, where where does the problem begin? The problem begins is that actually, real anti-Semites, those who are spreading. You know, you have. Uh, I made a video about Kyle Kulinski, right? Uh, uh, spreading uh, blood libels against Jews. Yeah. Okay? Uh, Shouldn't and, they and be he censored then? And he can do that with impunity, because I can't answer, because YouTube is censoring. So. so uh, instead of having a battle of ideas, which uh, I could, uh, you know, which I I could uh, uh, debunk what uh, Kyle is saying, my uh, my channel gets uh, you know uh, shadow banned because I I discuss these issues. I guess. Uh, I guess I mean um, regardless of whether the uh, the elite t- tend to tend to be right or not, uh, th- there is also the argument that uh, a small uh, a small group of people who are organized are going to be are always going to be more effective at getting things done than um, a, a large a large group of people, basically the majority of people who are disorganized. So, if you want to achieve a, some kind of political 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 goal, of course you're going to try to do that through a small organized group of uh, quote unquote elites. 
Why do you need the elites? Uh, you, you just, uh, you know, just have parties, uh, political parties. Well, uh, we'll do, uh, yeah, you know, I think uh, the argument uh, it's more that. No, uh, look, look. I, 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 okay, I'm, I'm not against elites. Uh, mm-hmm. And and uh, uh, there's always an, uh, there has to be an elite uh, because just you know people rise to the top uh, the, the people who are, who are better than others yes, are, are something rise, well. rise to the top. Uh, I'm just saying, stop giving them more power than they they have. Uh, just uh, uh, I'm, I mean, I'm, no. It, 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 isn't there power? Don't they have power because they can lead? Uh, lead the masses like sheep or whatever. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. The the, the I mean, <clears throat> the, let's say the political class uh, should be kind of uh, you know uh, people who are more uh, who know what they're doing, uh, and, and uh, you know the, the, they kind of come from kind of a political. Uh, uh, no, professionals and an and elite of of, of, of politicians, uh, but uh, it's uh, uh, the, the the problem that I was talking about is that you want to uh, the, the the people that there's a demand to give them extra extra power beyond the uh, even you know beyond democratic uh, you know you know basically armed democracy. So that they can have the power to harm the the other elites. Yeah, so so people were were actually calling on Trump to uh, you know all, all sorts of things. Yeah, don't don't uh, don't recognize the elections or, or stuff like that. Yeah, anti democratic things. Uh, to to, to uh, they were calling on him to do anti democratic things, weaken the the academy and to weaken. Uh, you know the 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 what they see as the elite, um, but no, uh, don't do that. But uh, like, I, I mean, how can you democratically weaken the academy, for instance? Democratically, uh, well, well, for one thing, you you cannot uh, remove finance for, from academies who are the, the, uh, like. Um, you know, in in Israel, you have uh, government will not finance. There's a law; the government will not finance uh, a body that uh, is against the idea of the Jewish state. Uh, for instance, yeah. Um, so you and uh, and I don't think you and and, and again, I don't think you have. I don't think you have to. Uh, Weaken the academy. I don't think the academy is a danger. Uh, the academy, I'm saying it in the new video, the academy has always been a hotbed of stupid ideas and bad ideas which were harmful to oh, culture. Yes. And, 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 uh, uh, see, the people, I think people have this wrong idea that the, the academy in the past was the thing that, you know, used the liberal ideas. Which, which, uh, on which our our society is built on, and now they changed into into anti-liberal. No, the academies were always beds of, of bad ideas. Liberal ideas came from pop culture. You know, and and uh, and the academy is always creating stupid ideas, um, and in the you know in, in the humanities uh, especially. Uh, I mean, in, you know, in, in sciences and all that. You, you know, of course, the academy. Uh, yeah. So sh- yeah. shouldn't their power be taken away then? No, well, just let them do what they do. But how how can you stop them without letting them letting stop. them do what they do? Stop them, stop them do what? They create ideas. The ideas, you know, go into culture, and uh, and the culture rejects them. But it doesn't. Re- it hasn't rejected them. It rejects them. It rejects them eventually. It- Eventually, perhaps. Yeah. Like I said, uh, you 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 don't win the culture. Uh, it's, it's a bit uh, like, um, shall I we say, tiresome at this point. <laughs> it was, uh, 
we have been waiting for the masses to reject their fucking ideas and uh, they don't look like they will anytime soon and uh, you know what do you mean i, I mean, I mean it, 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 but, but, but back in the 60s it was all about communism and all that and the masses rejected it uh and, and then you know it, it's all there's always some stupid idea now the, the the new thing is the whole social justice thing the woke thing and uh, you know oh, already yeah. so, and, uh, in a few years it will go away it's a fad oh yes i agree that uh, irrational systems are condemned by being irrational i just you know afraid uh, how much of our culture will this take down with it how much of my nation will this take down with it you know yes that, that they're taking down statues yeah uh yes if you fight back it will not uh it will not take down uh, uh. guys we, we've been talking to for three hours and actually uh to get prepared for to actually yeah, yeah. that's I, been a good conversation i think one of these no, things no, I, I, I talk about I, your I, video about land if you have that i if you have the time okay okay yeah, uh, so it was, I, I yeah i really enjoyed the conversation uh well, you do. yeah, yeah. It was, it was three hours flew by but, uh, yeah so yeah, yeah if you want to talk about again yeah sure yeah okay. uh we, we always talk on this server so if you see us if you see us talking on the voice channel or, or whatever you can just uh pop in yeah by the way, uh, who is listening? Uh, right now, nobody is listening. But okay. later on, I'll take this and I'll just upload it on my channel. On the channel, okay. So on YouTube. Okay. Yes, on YouTube. Yes. Yeah. Right. Well, uh, we said a few things that uh, might be problematic, especially about the uh, diaspora Jews. Uh, I hope. Uh, I hope. Uh, yeah. Uh, yes. I hope it will be fine. Yeah. I, okay. I, uh, one last question. I think you already answered it, but um, <laughs> does uh, Nietzsche believe in the wisdom of the crowd? Um, well, I'm, I'm actually making uh, my next video will be called Money Channel Liberalism, which uh, uh, I, I will talk about how Nietzsche and liberalism, uh, you know, can. Uh, uh, of course, Nietzsche has some anti-liberal views, but also, look, Nietzsche believes in letting everything. Uh, Nietzsche believed in in, in freeing everything. Uh, believe that you know, but once you free everything, eventually you know, it, it fights each other and, and it gets elevated. Uh, so, but so, but but yeah, I would say that this is uh, end of the. Uh, not exactly the wisdom of the crowd, but the belief that you have to let the people the freedom to just, uh, uh, to, 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 you know, to, to, the freedom to, 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 uh, to have everybody express themselves. Uh, and, and this will, uh, you know, lead to kind of, lead, basically lead to conflict, which from the conflict, uh, you know, you, you get elevated, you get... Uh, uh, get stronger, you get more powerful. Uh, humans. Yes, yes. I, I guess uh, Nietzsche is sort of um, one of those writers who, like, he has got something bo both for the left and the right. Because after all, he's he's pretty popular with people like uh, Julia Sevola and whatnot. Um, yeah. So I I hope uh, I hope I didn't <laughs> I didn't bore you too much, but uh, I I, I oh, didn't uh, have. A I haven't posted uh, the. I didn't post the, the review for your book on Amazon yet because I wanted to talk with you some more, a little bit more about the book before actually posting the review. But uh, I'll post it okay. soon with some modifications, of course. All right. So. Okay. You I... okay. Bye. See Bye. you. See you. It was a good talk. Yeah. yeah. Bye. Okay. How do I get out? Uh, uh, I. <laughs> how do I? <laughs> yeah, you got. Yeah. Okay. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm not good at this thing. Yeah. So. Right. Bye. Oof.
Are you still there? Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I shall I? How much more time have you got, thoughts? Um, I guess I'll kick out, uh, kick out Craig, given that this is a conversation, mm. or maybe whatever. I'll, I'll just leave Craig on a little bit more. So, w- mm-hmm. what did you think? What did mm-hmm. What did you think of the conversation? I've enjoyed it. He's based. I like him. I don't agree with everything, but you know, we, you don't have to agree with everything. Yes, couldn't ask him about Botsy, but I think he did bring it up. Mm. Uh, we didn't, I, uh, we didn't catch the moment, but next time we talk about Bo- Botsy and about things and. Yes, we couldn't talk much about Rand. Um, yeah, I knew that I had forgotten something. Um, yeah. Um, so, I, so I guess. Um, are you going to buy buy his book? I would recommend it. It's pretty good. Um, <laughs> it's pre- pretty fun. It's called uh, Universe Now. I'll probably post uh, post the link somewhere for it. And um, at, I guess with the wisdom of the crowds thing, um, and, and I mean, he was talking about the internet too. So, I mean, do you, do you believe in the wisdom of the crowd? Because I believe that uh, a group of people that manages to organize and to have, uh, you know, um, objective and um, identity for itself uh, will manage to more or less govern itself one way or another and uh, work towards its objectives one way or another. The problem comes when you try to make, uh, for instance, uh, um democratic system to make an example in which most people are not interested in politics when you do that most people will become plebs because that is the destiny of the pleb we will vote for whoever his granddad voted for basically and uh, we'll go on like that not caring about his actual interests and given the fact that the democratic government is granted and uh, so on and so forth, and eventually it'll be get fucked. And this is, I think, uh, the the main problem uh, with democracy, together with the fact that it's possible to, how shall we say, um, subvert it. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, it's like, um, I mean, uh, Hope is, uh, I think, said something, or, or however you say his name, that he, you can have a democracy if it's like a small village of 400 people. Like You, you can have any system, uh, mm-hmm. any system you want, really. And uh, as for the internet being the, you know, being the wis- proving the wisdom of the crowd, um, I think the problem with that is that, well, the internet was good, was good when, uh, like, when it was a small group, it's it's mm-hmm. when it's when the I guess the plebs the masses moved in that it became trash. So it doesn't really it doesn't really prove prove the wisdom of the crowd crowds either because you know I, I, like after a certain point, uh, the, I guess whatever was added by the people who came to the internet they mm-hmm. took away more I guess. And the internet is shit now. And yeah. <laughs> it really is, man. Yes. I, 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 another thing that I've been thinking about uh, is that you know, maybe one of the reasons why things are, have gone so wrong is maybe it's because there are more people now than there ever were before. I, I don't know. Because I, I think, um, I mean... Uh, the, the Roman Empire used to be something something like seventy million people or something, right? Just about, yes. And, and and now it's ridiculous. Like you have the, uh, almost that number of people just uh, just in mm. the United Kingdom. Yeah. Um, and in in Italy too, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yes, more or less, it's about uh, seventy five to uh, sixty five to seventy million people in Italy. I don't uh, remember because, too many now. Because I think uh, the academic agent was also going on about um, 
basically about that um that uh, basically when you have you need to have a mass in order to have mass culture mm-hmm. um and uh, i i don't know basically what zaratustra is trying to say is start is trying to do is to is to rescue a rescue mass culture from us <laughs> from uh, <laughs> yes. um be- because so both us put it on i make us appear as a bad guys yeah but so so that's why but but i think there's also ca- kind of a contradiction it's not not so much of a contradiction but like um we call it mass culture but um h- how mass actually is it which is which is what i was like uh, over and over again trying to get to uh yeah. in in the, in the in the conversation like is it really mass um i mean it, obviously it, it is mass in mass appeal but uh where is the taste uh, set and uh, i don't know and uh, another thing which i wanted to point out is that um, whenever shit, it's it's a, I, cu- i couldn't uh, speak properly when he was on and now it fe- i kind of feel bad because i'm i'm speaking while while he's not here but uh, anyway um, and another thing which came up was so um like every time he tried to find out where like mm-hmm. actually the, the medium the medium is bottom up um couldn't you like couldn't you say that uh, because he always points out to, to a small group of people but couldn't you say that basically those that small group of people are the elite who set the medium who, who set the tone who created the who created the medium it's always a small elite you, you can't mm. you, you you could call that small group of people an elite as well right um and uh, yeah so I mean I'm not sure whether just a second I've got to do a thing I forgot I'll be right back Yes So yeah I've talked for a while for a while by now So I'll wait until until he comes back But I wanted to get my thoughts out about the conversation as soon as possible before I forgot all of it as I do and uh, yeah it was it was pretty fun to have him on but uh, I, i i don't i don't know whether whether zaratustra will want to come on again after <laughs> I, i said those edgy things mm-hmm. um ah, hello you're back so yeah. I, <laughs> I, the, the question which remains now um mm-hmm. is uh <laughs> that Zaratustra will want to be back on after i said those um edgy things which um <laughs> i mean was i that edgy i mean i i didn't mention any any uh question uh you know jq <laughs> or whatever so <laughs> i i want i wonder whether that 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 was edgy enough um yeah Don't worry I think he's okay I think he's okay well He explained his perspective in a way that made it uh, appear that he wasn't uh, he wasn't like um, you know taking it the wrong way I'm yes. not so sure about 100% of his explanation although I heard about the Kulmolam and all those things but you know it's uh, probably it's pretty close to the perspective that people do have in israel on their side probably it looks a bit like that for most of them then you have to see what uh, some of them uh, think uh, you know if you listen if you listen very carefully to to academic agent uh, because mm-hmm. he's so, he's sort of a perennialist so he doesn't care like uh, he doesn't care yeah. about re- race or culture or religion mm-hmm. a spe- specific religion specific tradition or anything like that so um if you listen to him closely like sometimes you can hear him um kind of like uh, trying to low key 
low-key simp for for Israel. Uh, <laughs> very carefully, but very carefully, but yes, sometimes. But, I mean, uh, I mean, he's not, he's careful about it, not because he thinks that he, YouTube is going to shut him down, but rather because. Mm-hmm. Um, he, he does. He did, he's afraid of his friends. He's cutting him he, down. <laughs> yes, the chat. Yeah, and his friends. Yeah, who all, <laughs> who all don't have such a positive opinion of it because because I mean, they are they are I mean. not perennialists, I guess. Um, <laughs> I mean, we have had uh, a video in which I ranted it three hours about about one psalm and about how it is. Uh, It is a biblical argument, argument for blood and soil. So we can, we can just shut up. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. So oh, I guess uh, g- given, that, uh, given that this was supposed to be mostly about his book and, and his views about art, uh, which I think are probably more important about any, any politics anyway, So yeah. what what did you make of of them? He has many interesting perspectives. I think uh, he underestimates the the extent to the we- to which people have been influenced uh, by by the elite, by media to like certain things to have certain things been marketed to them and so on and so forth. And this may be This may be at least in part because uh, he's Israeli and they haven't been as uh, as subtle about it in his country. You know what I mean? No, what There's less of an agenda, perhaps, uh, to convince them. Yeah, but I, I'm not sure. I mean, even though he, do, he doesn't live, uh, he lives in Israel. I, I'm not sure whether he even, he even uh, lives in Israel anymore, but... Um, mm-hmm. uh, let's let's say that he does. E- even if he lives there, he also lives on the internet, like 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 the rest of us. So um, I don't know, like b- because uh, in normal uh, real life, most people don't care about any of these things. Let's be honest. Uh, mm-hmm. th- the reason why m- most of us care about any of this uh, is probably to a large extent. Or at least in my case, I don't know about you, but in my case, it's probably because of the internet, because I found a bunch of people who talk about this stuff. Um, I, well, I was reading books before going, uh, before becoming uh, like this, but you know. Like this, yeah. Company, <laughs> probably the company that I have kept has influenced me in a, in a, in a way, you know what I mean? <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, uh, about Botsy, the question that I wanted to ask was about the simping, of course. Be- yeah. um, because I th- because uh, he, from what I understand, like, uh, uh, if you remember, he mentioned uh, ASMR. He, he has a positive, yeah. uh, he has a positive view of ASMR. He thinks that it's uh, some kind of an art or something like that, a, a way of... He seems to think I, that it's an example of bottom down, of bottom up. Uh, cultural phenomenon. He likes those. I don't. I don't. I didn't get if he meant that. Isamar uh, is the best thing in the world. But you know. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. He's... Go, go. Sorry. No, no, you go on. I mean, if he meant that, I didn't get. I didn't. Uh, I didn't get it. I get that he was uh, using it as an example of uh, of uh, cultural phenomenon from the bottom up. Another thing which I could not ask was um, whether what he's doing is basically t- turning turning um, effectively turning the things which he's praising like. Uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which is praising for being pop culture, whether mm-hmm. by, by, by like praising it like this, or by writing books about it, he's effectively turning it more, uh, t- taking it away from pop and towards high culture, which he doesn't seem to like. 
Um, that's a good point. I didn't get. I, I didn't think about it, but that's a good point. In a way, analyzing it literally, uh, literally makes it uh, belong more to the I heart uh, level. In a way, yeah. Yes, um, I, I, I pr- probably came up to me, but I didn't want to interrupt him. But uh, may- mm-hmm. maybe I should have. Hopefully, hopefully, we'll, I'll get another chance to ask him. Um, well, if I can't ask him on on uh, on a on a discussion, I'll probably ask ask it of him um, on Twitter or something, and uh, I'll probably mention it in another talk or something. Yeah, because um, he mean I mean he he basically said that um, you know after after it becomes uh, serious and then high art, you know, the only people who are interested in it are a bunch of, uh, what was the word, a- aficionados or something. Oh, um, yes, aficionados. So you, you used the snob at least a few times. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I don't think that the average MCU fan is going to, like, really cares about... Um, I, well, I don't like him. Uh, I can uh, give a gift to him, and uh, I would mean it in the most constructive and uh, you know loving way. Is that uh, some arguments uh, he just uh, dismisses, like when uh, we were talking about how high heart in the end uh, enters the cycle by influencing the low art and so on and so forth. He simply said yes, but not really. And left it at that. But uh, if I sit down uh, and I start to think about examples, I can, uh, I can, uh, can I, I came up with several. Let us say I can came up with several examples of this happening. So I think, uh, I think uh, if he wants to write a sequel, perhaps he would, uh, he would be good, well served by thinking about these kind of things. Yeah, I'll, prob- I'll probably send him uh, send him the this discussion that we had like at the end uh, to him with mm-hmm. a timestamp or something. Uh, okay. I, I'm I'm just a weeb, like I, I only care about anime, so I don't really know much about high culture, but uh, <laughs> which which affected which affected um, which affected pop culture. So, so why don't you why don't you list list out uh, these examples um, where you think? That well, I can up. think in a way that uh, if we think, for instance, in literature, in literature, in particular, you can think about how fantasy is uh, has been influenced by a lot of high heart in literature, in preceding literature. For instance, you can't literally have Tolkien if you don't have uh, count uh, how the fuck. There was his name now I don't remember because I'm tired white as fucking second. King of Elfland Stouter. Wait a second, huh? Okay. Lord Dunsany, that guy, for instance. You can't really have Tolkien if you don't have uh, Lord Dunsany before the center uh, where you see us before writing, uh, writing about the kingdom of the fairies and so on and so forth. And in the same way, you can't have him without having a whole host of uh, fairy literature, as it, was, as it was called at the time, which, uh, which was uh, inspired by like theatrics and by legends and so on and so forth, which made the um, cultural basis upon which uh, fantasy then was uh, built. So you could argue that uh, when things become high heart, they remain as a high as high art and uh, they influence the formation of uh, the new forms of art. They become uh, like uh, a substrata, if you want, of culture from which everyone can take. And uh, and people sometimes uh, sometimes take the right things and uh, they came up came uh, they came up with uh, cool stuff. That is yeah. uh, one thing uh, it could uh, uh, work a bit about, I think. I could, uh, 
man. Yeah, so I, I, I guess you could argue that like th- those uh, early niche niche groups, mm-hmm. even when it even when it comes to counterculture and stuff like that, th- those early niche groups which were, the, which I mean, there were only like a few people um, mm-hmm. in the scene or whatever. That you could sort of, I guess, call it. Um, high culture or something. I'm not, not really, but you, you see what I mean. In the sense yes. that it's, it, it is not mass culture, I guess. Mm-hmm. But rather um, uh, a germinating point, I guess. Mm. Uh, c- can you think of any other examples? We were talking before about, uh, I am a bit of a nerd about uh, early 20th century fantasy and sci-fi literature because I always liked the uh, Conan books, H.P. Lovecraft books, and so on and so forth. You can see a lot of examples in here, like uh, Lovecraft, you could say, he more or less contributing in inventing fantasy, fantasy and science fiction and horror at the beginning of the century, back when it was all uh, Pulp Fiction, sent on mag- sold on magazines and so on and so forth. And he has uh, a very, 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 very extensive uh, reading list. If you want to get serious about, let's understand what the fuck Lovecraft is trying to say. You know what I mean? He he goes on with uh, literary, with literary quotations and so on and so forth from. from all, all from high literature, because he thought of himself as being elite. He was a New England uh, sort of aristocrat and so on and so forth. So he didn't uh, like to read uh, pleb books, basically. He liked to, re- to read uh, cool books uh, written by people uh, in the cultural elite. And uh, if you, he himself, in one of his letters, I will find it for you one of these days, but I remember, he himself, yeah. in one of his letters, he explains basically various uh, literary influences he has had. That, uh, that letter that he sent to Arthur Conan Doyle, the poor Russell, it's like 30, uh, 30 pages of letters in which uh, Lovecraft, uh, Lovecraft goes on and on being an ad. And... <laughs> I think uh, it's a pretty good argument to say that he was inspired by high, by high culture because uh, he, all, uh, he always quotes uh, people uh, people you don't really he- he- hear about now. You know what I mean? But you hear about Lovecraft. So by generation to generation, the stuff has still arrived to you still arrived to the normal people and then uh, created a new, the new idea from uh, bottom up, if you, were, if you want to say that it always happens like that. Yes, I mean, it, it, it's a bit odd because um, it, it, in a way he's saying that, um, well, he's not an enemy of the elite. The, the elite are not his enemy. He doesn't want to destroy the elite. But... Mm-hmm. Uh, at the same time, uh, the elite consider him, or, or rather, the, the, the plebeian stuff, mm-hmm. the plebeian stuff, uh, art uh, and stuff, to be um, to be their enemy. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, it doesn't uh, because um, because in his story, I guess uh, about every medium in his. Um, basically, it's it's the elite, the elitist, the snobs who basically destroy every medium, the ones who try to make it uh, serious, more and more serious. And, and I guess, I guess um, um, Zarathustra wants to keep it like in the middle, not, not becoming too serious to the point where it, it becomes culturally ir- irrelevant, according to him. Um, but I don't know, like, I mean, isn't that that sort of like admitting that hmm, that tr- tragedy is serious? Because 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 as you become more serious, you start to um, like make make less comedies, make less uh, cheery stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
that sort of thing. I mean, do you, do you think that's true? That's true either. I mean, do you think that's true either that, uh, like, you you get that um, when when it becomes a serious medium that, uh, like, oh, it it all it, it all it means it become melodramatic. Yes, yes, I think. I think yes. I think it goes from. Uh, I think you would say that it goes from uh, more uh, prosaic, normal uh, con content, more in touch with uh, people and what they do all day, to a more. Uh, to a more eternal, yes, a more um, eternal perspective, a more uh, a perspective more centered about the human condition in general, something like that. I think we have come to more or less of an uh, agreement and understanding on the, on comedy yes, and I the mean, I... stuff with, uh, you know, with quoting Aristotle. I'm sorry. Tell me, I'm sorry. I didn't want to interrupt you. No, no, no. That's fine. Um, but I, I guess the question is, if if these things uh, tap into um, mm -hmm. tap tap into eternal, the eternal. Why is it that um, they do not appeal to most people. Shouldn't shouldn't they appeal to most people? If if it, uh, it should, why, why does it only appeal to a niche to a niche when you <laughs> try to when you try to talk about the eternal? In my experience, people are attracted to things that speak to them about the eternal when they try. They often don't try because uh, they think it's overly serious, they think it's uh, too difficult, they think it's going to be boring, and so on and so forth. But if you take someone to theater, for instance, and you have him watch something, uh, something cool, right? Something, uh, something of weight, they will come out and they, they will often have liked it. You know what I mean? They will, people will like the Greek tragedies if uh, you take to the theater and uh, you show them to, uh, to them, even if they are the kind of people that uh, don't think they would like something like that. When you tell them, look, trust me, fucking try, let's go watch Oedipus Rex. It's fucking cool. It's fucking amazing. People have written about this, uh, about this piece of theater for millennia, man. Come with me. When they come with you, they will say, fuck, you were right. That's, uh, that was very cool. That was very strange. I didn't, I didn't think it would be like that. You know, I think I thought it would be boring. Uh, but if, if that is the case, then why is it that, uh, I mean, um, Zarathustra was talking about the free market. So w why doesn't uh, w why don't these um, marketeers like or realize or like look? Um, all, all we need to do is like prom promote this, and uh, it will be popular with a lot of people. Uh, if, as you say, when people actually see it, it is popular. Why, why is it so mm. hard? Why don't people try to sell it to them? I guess. I think they try to sell uh, stuff that uh, you know the kind of man that I am. I think they are trying to sell them the kind of stuff that will sell the, to them a narrative instead of uh, talking to them about things uh, that are eternal. Because uh, they make my, they make even make uh, they may even make more, less money by doing this. But uh, the long term, uh, like. Uh, the long-term power depends on it. I see. So, so I guess they are more interested in in the narrative uh, more than even making money. Uh, I guess so, which is why you can't have a free market anyway. Certainly, they are more interested in the narrative than they are in having a population that is, uh, you know, educated uh, to a certain standard and can understand what the fuck they are doing. That is probably the thing they le they least want in their life. Uh, do you, do you think that um, Ayn Rand failed to make serious art because I think she was trying to be serious. She wanted to be taken seriously, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know if she fails. She's a bit on the verge. I told you before. I don't think she's. Uh, 
uh, such a revolutionary author as uh, she and her fans think uh, she was, but I also don't. Uh, I also don't think she was a complete modern. You know what I mean. I think uh, the metaphysics is incomplete. I think uh, the, she reaches some conclusions I don't agree with, and so on and so forth. But it's not like uh, I think she's stupid. Yes, no. because I, yeah, uh, I mean, um, it's because one one of the reasons why people who like make fun of friend, um, like when they criticize her, they try to make fun of her, like, uh, oh look. Uh, she she looks so serious. Why, why does she look so serious? But what they're saying is that um, this is not to be taken seriously. This is just a stupid uh, mm-hmm. a, a romance a romance novel by uh, a middle aged woman for mid middle aged women and mm, little men uh, who think that uh, they are uh, Howard Rock or something. They're, they're the protagonist of. Uh, they're the protagonist of an of an of a of a hero in uh, in a novel aimed at women essentially uh, that that's so, oh, not, not, yeah that sort of thing um i mean yes i and, think she was able to write at her best let us say, let us put it in this way i don't think she was writing for here for the all right let's write some bullshit uh, make some money you know I think she was writing at her best, uh, like particularly in uh, in Atlas Shrugged. It's the kind of book uh, you don't fucking write if you don't uh, if you are not in it. But you know, she she still has uh, an incomplete metaphysics. She still has uh, conclusions that uh, appears logical on the first uh, on the first read, but uh, don't really hold up. She is not. Uh, she still leaps and bound uh, better than uh, most. But than most uh, books, uh, plebs are going to read in this generation. Uh, uh, g- given and that, the choice is to give the, to your kid to read like uh, Harry Potter or uh, Atlas Shrugged when he's thirteen. You probably you'll probably give him Atlas Shrugged if you want your kid to be based. In what <laughs> uh, I guess, uh, given that uh, Zaratustra might might listen to this, what did mm-hmm. you want to ask him? What did you want to ask him about um, uh, about uh, Ayn Rand? Nothing in particular. I just wanted to speak for half an hour about uh, how he may is right on basically ninety percent of his video on Rand. And uh, why I disagree on the ten percent, I don't agree with. And then I suppose uh, I thought uh, we would have a conversation, a give and take about uh, how you know, about how why you believe in Skyfather and how how he will uh, you know, and how he is uh, deceived by demons and stuff like that. And then we will both laugh. We will all laugh and, uh, and have, have had a good conversation. That was I, I mean, uh, w- w- what was the ten percent he was wrong about? I think that he's making, uh, he's not really wrong. He's making the argument that she is wrong because she's ma- he's making the argument that she is wrong because the, the uh, metaphysical assumption requires other t- requires other things. That is uh, that um, you can't derive for the only reason uh, for conclusions about, uh, for instance, uh, the good of men being surv- the good of men being only survival and uh, men having uh, uh, having uh, <laughs> having an objective. I don't remember how it's called in English, but you know what I mean. Uh, an end. And so on and so forth. You can't, uh, you can't, uh, you can't reach those conclusions by logic alone. You need a metaphysical assumption, basically. And I will say, and I will fucking agree. He then goes on, though, saying that this metaphysical assumption is is illogical. And then I will start talking about Aquinas. 
basically. <laughs> I see. I think um, you might not, or maybe you might like it. Um, his video on um, Pascal's wager. I think you would probably probably agree with with that um, because it's it's um, that it's just um, yeah you, you know you know the, the usual stuff about Pascal's wager. Mm. Uh, um, um, I mean, it's it's supposed to cut uh, about. Mm? Yeah, sorry, go on. No, nothing, just a bullshit. We should try to get him to interact in that thread about uh, the book from Zyuk Tesla. People didn't really care about it, but I was having fun writing it, honestly. I see. Um, um, let's talk about it now. I mean, okay. So, so what is there to say about it, I guess? The, it's called The Sacred Science. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, go ahead. I think in Eng the English version was like the holy science, but uh, I don't know. It, it should be the sacred science if people have uh, translated it correctly. It's an, uh, it's an amusing book. I love it. Mm, what did you think I... about the thread? Uh, but the thread that was writing. You want to, ah no, you want to make this into a conversation uh, here at uh, our chat. Uh, I mean, to, to keep, I mean, it's all right. Who cares? Um, if he do doesn't go, if he doesn't go to this, if he been for hours. <laughs> I see. I see. Um, <laughs> oh God! Oh, to, on Thursday, uh, we are going to talk about the. Uh, the Eva movie, God, God save us. Is <laughs> <laughs> God in, in his heaven anymore? Uh, uh, I mean, I don't know. I mean, talk, talk, speak, speaking about um, high art and um, previous art or, or whatever, like, I don't know, like I saw, I've seen a bunch of people like praising it, uh, saying that, uh, Oh well, if if you didn't like it, well, it's only cause like uh, oh, he's making fun of you uh, with Gendo's character that he, that you are a neat or something. I mean, I don't know. Like I, the the Pope, people, um, people, he, people. If something has been made bad, ironically, to shit on the audience, it's still bad. It's still bad. It doesn't care. I don't care if you'd make it bad ironically. Holy shit. Shit posting ironically is still shit posting. That's rule number three, I think, of 4chan. Remember the rules. Jesus. Yeah, I mean I I don't know. I mean I I mean I I did read I did read some people. Some people on 4chan too, but I'm I'm not sure whether people are even are even that ironic, especially on the on the anime board, um, and yeah. no, the anime no. manga board. The argument yeah? here is that Tanno made it wrong on uh, made it uh, suck on purpose, on purpose to fuck with the otakus that he hates, you know, to see yeah. ah look at this Gendo is totally an otaku, he's totally actually an otaku. He was doing it, uh, he was doing all of it for having his wife or her alliance. So it's still bad. You made it bad on purpose and now it's bad. Jesus. Yeah, I mean, uh, the end of Evan Evangelion, I mean, it, it also did make the same criticism, but uh, <laughs> and it, 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 I mean, it was more tragic. <laughs> so I guess that, that might make it better. Whereas this, I don't know. Um, it's not less comical. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess, I mean, after all, I, I, I saw some plebs uh, praising for it because, uh, oh, look, uh, uh, fi finally all the characters got the end uh, which they deserved. Ah, good. Uh, Shin Shinji finally, I don't know, Shinji be be became a salary man. The yeah. Andy producer of that club deserves it, but he's a bullet in the head. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know, like... I, I recorded a rant about it, a three-hour rant or something, but uh, with my new um, little action camera thing. And unfortunately, it only, it only recorded an hour, the first hour. Um, 
where I went on a rant about uh, the second Andy Warhol video, which uh, and and that's 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 also kind of relevant to this as well because um, I mean I mean uh, <laughs> if you're talking about pop culture, I mean <laughs> Andy Warhol is somewhat relevant to it, I guess. Um, I suppose um, it would be yes. Um, well, pop art, anyway. I, I don't know whatever that's supposed to mean. Um, and uh, I don't know. Um, uh, I, I, I guess the conclusion after, that I came after just talking to myself uh, like that for no reason what was that um, um, it's it's not even about it's not even Andy Warhol which, who is interesting, but. Uh, um, it's it's just the law, uh, a little bit like with Chris Chan, I guess. It's not like Chris Chan is a is a terribly inter- interesting individual uh, and all that. But um, so you see. <laughs> and um, but I mean, um, oh, uh, she, she. <laughs> Um, and I also watched uh, a review by Argent before before starting going on that on that rant. And uh, well, when it uh, what Argent said, I don't know. Argent kind of has a ple- plebeian taste because, like, he said he said that he he didn't hate it, but he didn't love it either. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was it was just uh, uh, Eva movie. We are all. Evangelion. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, but uh, one of the things which he said made me think, uh, because he, he said he said that um, when he watched the original Evangelion, when he was thirteen years old, and uh, Zarathustra, if you are if you are listening, and uh, you think that pop culture is art, um, you can just take the original Eva. Um, <laughs> Uh, that's that's as close as you get. Um, so, so um, anyway, uh, when he watched the original Eva b- back when he was thirteen years old, like he was, he, he became interested in finding out like all the things uh, around it, like the the religious symbols and and all that. Basically, the the law. Um, mm-hmm. That's L O R E, but I can't fucking say that um, because I'm not a fucking Anglo. But. Uh, basically, the, the rebuild, the final movie, like the, the, there's a lot of uh, references to, I, I don't know, the, the, this lands, the, the the lands of Cassius, or uh, and 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 the lands, I don't know, of of whoever, whoever, um, mm-hmm. like a lot, some techno babble, but and all that. But uh, basically, he 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 was not interested in the law around it when when he watched it, so. Mm. Um, because I guess one of the things which came up in the second Andy Warhol video um, discussion, which A, A and uh, Academic Agent and Mr. D had, was that, uh, like, w- w- what is the value of the Mona Lisa? Because uh, Andy Warhol had made, the, had made this, like, print thing uh, where, mm. where, where, where they had, like, a bunch of Mona Lisas uh, printed mm. all ne- next to each other. Um, and uh, and Mr. D like showed like uh, um, he, he went on DuckDuckGo or, or Google or whatever like and went on the Im- uh, image search tab and typed Mona Lisa and said like oh look and uh, Andy Warhol's painting looks like uh, like a fucking uh, uh, image search uh, um, like an, an image search. Um, you know, like 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 how in, in uh, how in an image search image, like you would have like the like many small pictures of the Mona Lisa, right, N- next to each mm-hmm. other, like on a print, and they're all slightly different because they are you you, you don't know which one is the reprint uh, or something a, a copy made by some someone else yes. or a lo- 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 definition copy. So mm-hmm. you know, s- such such uh, such vision, such genius, or something. Uh, yeah, you know, you know. Um, I mean, I'm not sure. I'm I'm not sure whether this means this this shows that uh, he was a genius or whatever. But um, <laughs> um, so, and he brought up um, uh, the 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 labor theory of value, the Marxist uh, thing mm-hmm. story, um, and uh, in relation to art. Um, so w- because like um, 
one of the things which people in the chat were constantly criticizing um Andy Warhol for like people in the chat of of that video of that stream about Andy Warhol was that like oh I, I could do this too like uh, I mean you, you don't actually need to have talent like uh, uh like when you're making like uh, when you're doing something actually hard like I don't know mm -hmm. uh sculpture or something um and uh, well w one of the counter arguments so I guess uh, uh, that came up was um um where does the so so basically he he argued that like the uh, mr d asked whether like uh, the value of the art comes from the work that's put into it like so, so if mm -hmm. he, because in, in the in the, the uh, in the marxist uh, i don't know if he, i don't know if it's even originally marxist but marxists use it and the the, yeah. the the labor theory of value, basically the value of a product or something or anything, um, comes from the work which is put in. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I guess the people criticizing Warhol for doing easy shit are saying that it is worthless because it is easy. So if he was doing something harder, that would have had more value or something. That is a good point of view, yes. It's only worthless on... A on a um, labor theory of value because uh, it would be easy to, de to replicate. So that, I didn't, I, I didn't even think of it like that, but uh, makes a lot of sense. Yeah, but I guess, it, it, is that really the reason why, um, uh, like the actual Mona Lisa. No, I don't think people. Uh, think, uh, I don't think people think uh, people think like that. But the, I think it's a nice argument to use. You know what I mean? Yes, because uh, like um, one of the things which uh, they showed was like um, a picture of uh, like a bunch of tourists with fucking mob, uh, iPhones, uh, mm -hmm. Like uh, all the bunch together, like sardines in front of the Mona Lisa, all, all mm -hmm. trying to take a picture of the Mona Lisa, and and like, uh, um, I guess they were asking. Um, I, I'm not sure whether it was A or, or Mr. D. I think it like um, it was Mr. D. Like, uh, are, are these people like having a genuine um, a, a artistic experience? Like, uh, they they all that they're, they're trying to do is like. Um, uh, like, what is even the fucking point of taking a picture of the Mona Lisa? Mm -hmm. There are already pictures of it online. Um, what is the difference if it, what if that it's, it's your own image? Um, and, uh, I mean, is the Mona Lisa such a, a difficult to draw a drawing that, that, that it, a painting or that it deserves to, like, uh, um, have this reputation which it has as a great work of art. Like, aren't they like, can't you go on fucking uh, deviant art and uh, <laughs> or, or pits him and find some, some otaku who has uh, drawn a picture which is more beautiful than that? Um, and um, who has put more, more work into it? So, so basically, what he's saying. Uh, so, the, so the value does does not really come from um, from um, from the picture itself. Yeah. Uh, if he, if he didn't know that it was the Mon if that it was Leonardo, Leonardo da Vinci, if he didn't know the, the history, so so basically, what what came to me was that maybe the value in this case comes more from from the story about it than about. Than than itself, mm -hmm. um, from the law, uh, you know, like somebody tried to steal it, and blah blah blah, and uh, it it well, this and that person owned it. So if I, can you see what I mean, almost. Um, so I guess yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I would agree. That's a uh, part of why the Mona Lisa is the Mona Lisa. And the 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 the, the reason why uh, the end of sorry. Uh, Evangelion, Trice Upon, Trice Cursed, Plus One, was um, was a failure in in that sense. At least when when it came to to me and to Argent, is that it, it didn't make us it didn't make us interested about about the history 
like uh, about the b- by the history of course we are we are kind of talking about the pre-production the the, the production and the post-production almost mm-hmm. um p- so uh, because like it, even when you think about the original evangelion like um a, a lot of the quote unquote depth to it uh, mm-hmm. came from the analysis and and a lot of the Absolutely. analysis w- w- was about uh, the production was about ano um mm-hmm. like uh, he was depressed and you know uh, just go to e- e- evageeks.org uh, I-, i feel sad for them uh, that they-, they will have to like uh, go-, go through this garbage um and uh, try to fi- trying to find so- something interesting about it um but uh, I- I- so i guess you what you're kind of doing it doing by by doing that is uh, uh taking it seriously and and just mm-hmm. by the act of taking it seriously um you kind of have more and more depth added to it i guess um but it's it's kind of weird because it it, it doesn't come from within the thing itself uh, right um mm-hmm. And um, hey. in some cases, it comes from the thing itself. In some others, it doesn't. If we make a general theory of value, you will say that the things are, value, are valuable if and only if people consider them valuable, independently of the work necessary to make them, and so on and so forth. If you take this stance, then... you have uh, some things that will be still uh, va- more valuable than others on the uh, on the grounds that they are there and they are, they are useful but still a uh, great part of the value will be literally how much i value this how much i think it i need how much i think uh, it's needed for instance and so on and so forth yeah i mean i i guess uh, the, the the liberal arts uh, tires student um take on it would be that um, uh the work of art is not is not finished even after after it is finished because mm-hmm. you cannot you cannot separate it um, from the historical context uh but i i don't know the, the problem with that i mean but by that argument i mean you you can say that all sort, sorts of uh, interesting uh, but things which we do not consider art, art you know things which are not artistic like 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 is fucking christian a, a work of art just because like there's uh, so much uh, law to to learn about him and people are interested in to think about it <laughs> second christian has uh, lived most of the greek tragedies in the course of his life <laughs> yeah I, i think i think some some people did, did joke, joke about it like uh, how, how it's the uh the, you know the the modern oedipus or something uh, yes <laughs> oh, it, it, it's it's the, it's the fall of modern man i guess um the, He, he you, see to... need, you see why we need fucking theater we need uh, to get the art back imagine imagine in the 2030s uh, 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 a group of actors and so on uh, doing a theater representation of the lives and times of christian <laughs> researched by christians and everything <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean i i, I remember what epic that would be <laughs> yeah yeah that th- th- that would be epic uh, i mean <laughs> they i mean uh, i think you want to death the sense before then in the fucking theater <laughs> i i i mean i i remember like um, um somebody on the server i think evil florida has um, his um profile pictures from some sort of um Titus Andronicus, yeah, from the movie, but yeah. from the movie, from the movie. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 basically, I don't know. I watched a little some clips of it, and it looked very weird. I, I, I wonder whether Chris Chan would would Chris Chris Chan <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
drama would kind of look like that too, because like some people were saying that, uh, oh, 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 it's showing, it's, it's showing the depravity of um, a, a Nero's Rome or something, pagan Rome or something. So, <laughs> I mean, I mean, I don't know. It's I, I, I don't know. It's a bit, uh, I mean, it's. Uh... It's the Shakespearean version, a version uh, the people say of a Tarantino movie because people die all the time and so on. people get uh, dismembered and so on and so forth, which is based, to be quite honest. But you know, I yeah. always loved. I always loved both uh, the both the theater version and the movie version because the aesthetic of the movie version is like you know it's Rome but they have beer but they have newspapers it's uh, it's a fucking electric car man I love that shit I would uh, live in there by the way what do you make of uh, one of the things which uh, Zarathustra seemed to imply is that uh, as things become more uh elitist mm. um y- you get less um sets and violence um uh, is that really true i mean uh i, I don't know because it... It work, uh, you are right sometimes it works uh, in the opposite sense like uh, grl martin is tra- has tried to make uh, fantasy serious again in his the in his depraved vision, I don't really like his like his book lately. But uh, and he said he did it basically by making everything leftist, by making everything subversive. Ah, you thought uh, the knights were going to be honorable? Look at this guy t- taking a kid and launching him from a window, and so on and so forth. Look at this guy fucking his sister, and so on and so forth. I so mean, you I, know. I, I, Mm-hmm. I, I guess I, I guess that that's that's what he meant when uh, when he said that uh, like real life is not like tragedy like you know like it's not like mm-hmm. people are constantly it's not this kind of tragedy. raving it's and murdering each other. Yeah, yeah. It's not this kind of tragedy, of course, because this kind of tragedy is uh, um, a subversive perversion of uh, society as it works, but. Uh, it's also not a tragedy. It's uh, it's a ridiculous thing in the end, you know. It's a comedy. The tragedy will be like uh, the seven king. What was it called? The seven the seven of the seven against the Thebes, for instance, in which you they start presenting you all these people, all all these the heroes of Thebes, and they all like. We know we are fated to die, but we will stand for our city and so on and so forth. And uh, you know, stuff you That's can. Really like. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I, whereas uh, what you described sounded just like just uh, misery porn, really. Oh, look mm-hmm. uh, how 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 evil people are. Yeah, yeah, they are. They are. Um, they are really people are all depraved uh, in reality. They're just pretending to be civilized, uh, you know, <laughs> some fuck fucking joke attire. Um, <laughs> yes, view of the world. It is true that most uh, subversive uh, high heart by quotes uh, made today, which I would argue is not actually high heart because it has been made today, it has basically been written. It's basically to be understood. To crash. <laughs> Okay. Ah, uh, never mind. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I see. I mean, I mean, it's not. I don't know. It's ki- kind of like a stupid. I don't know. I, I'm kind of tired of sub subversion at this point. To the point where, like, I don't see any point in it at all. Like, uh, oh, exactly. look. Uh, I completely agree with you. It has been played out uh, completely, and people should just try to do reconstruct or superversion if you want. Yeah, um, another thing which I talked about in that round, which unfortunately was not recorded, was that, uh, I mean, I say unfortunately, but I was just going, uh, 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 like, for most of the time, because I was thinking as I spoke. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I, I thought that, um, like, how much better it would be if 
um, basically Eva was not under under a copyright anymore. Like, yeah, yeah. because um, I I don't know. Just uh, it just seems to me that I, I don't. I, I guess in a sense, in that sense, I kind of believe in the wisdom, quote unquote, wisdom of the crowd. But really, mm-hmm. I just believe in. I just believe in the wisdom of some crowds. Um, I, I guess um, not, not, not all crowds. Um, so, so in the sense that the wisdom of my in group, like yeah. everyone else. Yeah, and, and I guess in in this case it would be like uh, otaku fans or whatever, where I feel like they would have done a better job of um, adding mm-hmm. to this uni- universe, given that we are this all this uh, whole discussion has been about a, a universe building uh, which yeah, yeah. which in in a sense is it's a bit like folklore i guess in the sense that um, you know certain things get added by people very true uh, very true good comparison yeah i mean i'm i'm yeah i guess m- maybe s- some stuff with uh, which uh, 4chan has done is kind of like universe building like the scp stuff maybe mm-hmm. um and uh, uh, yeah I, I, so you see like so i guess i kind of trust i trust that maybe fortune of the past when it was a smaller group m- might mm-hmm. have been able to, to create uh, collectively something good um and that's i guess a form of uh, um believing in the, in the wisdom of the crowd but uh, i mean i mean uh, the average person on fortune back then well, that that's not that's not really um representative of like ordinary normal functional people all right um so yeah what was the point i was trying to <laughs> yeah and uh, i can't remember what the point i was trying to make was what was i talking about uh, you were talking uh, about how um, how you wish uh, Evangelion was out of uh, of, a, of copyright, copyright. Yes. Copyright. Yeah. Yes. I mean, um, uh, it, it, even now, like <laughs> uh, there, there's stuff like um, uh, Eva Ritek and that fanfic. I don't know if you have read it. Read it. They, they have they have their own, own uh, ancient website with some fan art called. Uh, uh eva r um it's it's at eva um i think the the that small uh, small straight line is called a dash right a dash uh, r uh and anyway you, whatever uh, and uh, yeah, but even even with a lot of western stuff i feel like and um mm-hmm. um I, I, i don't know like i feel like e- 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 even in the ancient past I I'm not sure is it the the Iliad uh which which doesn't have a proper author uh um maybe uh, you, you know like <laughs> so it's not like I I completely I completely reject uh the idea that uh, like um I I kind of like the idea of um uh, like that we are all that uh, rather than having one author um we are we can all um put in our efforts into one one project and and maybe you can have like a like a dictator over that project so that uh, because mm-hmm. you need one right um and, and that that's sort of what uh, what that uh, visual novel which which i don't know we will make one day on our survey is supposed mm-hmm. to be um anyway i think i was i wanted getting to make done. another yeah. sorry it's getting done it's getting done don't worry yes yes i i, I kind of feel sorry for for um a, a tort agent because he, he's the one who is mainly working on, on the first uh, first uh, first route um but uh, i i don't really have any artistic talent so i guess I'll, i'll probably probably do some i'll probably do the editing and i came up with some ideas but that's about it mm-hmm. um i'll probably edit the script and all that but uh, yeah 
Uh, I probably wanted to make another point, but uh, I guess I think I think we have talked for uh, for enough today, wouldn't you say? Yes, let's see. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I had fun, but um, I don't know how Absolutely. much. Uh, yeah, um, high art, low art, whatever. I mean, I, I, I've also I've also come in in, in defense of uh, pop culture from people who say that like, oh, anime is just for kids, or oh, it's just porn. Um, but uh, I don't know. It's it's. Kind of, I, I'm kind of in a weird position, to be honest. Uh, I mean, I... I, I, I by a strange angle that I haven't considered it uh, many times, but uh, I mean, uh, he's right on more... I think he's right on many things that he says. I, I wouldn't say all, but I sort of agree with many of his points. Right then, that was uh, Zarathustra. Well, Zarathustra serpent, anyway. We, we couldn't mm. get Zarathustra on, unfortunately. Um, so, yeah. Thank you they for listening. Spoke, yeah. Yeah, they say that he spoke though, on, the, on the other channel. Uh, they say what? Who, who says what? Yeah? Who spoke that at Zarathustra, man? He said that he spoke on the other channel to say what? Tus. It's what it was a joke, don't worry. You didn't get it. It's fair. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, I, I don't have a I don't have a sense of humor. I'm, I'm not I'm not, I'm not even it's German. Funny. Yeah. Uh, so thank you for listening and now get out. <laughs>